Bespoke Radio for the Masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. Listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Well, well, well. How you doing, Fade to Black? Bespoke radio for the masses. Today's Tuesday, April 19th, 109 days into the new year, 255 days left. We are live from a bunker somewhere in downtown Burbank, California. I think it's under the Burlington Coat Factory, three stories deep under the parking garage. Come and find us. Come and hang out. I'd like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States, hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black. For KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the Planet. I'm your oh so humble host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking out there, everybody? Been waiting for this show for three years. Tonight, our special guest is Dane Wigington. Yes, sir. Dane is here to discuss chemtrails and more specifically, geoengineering. His website is geoengineeringwatch.org. Tomorrow night, tomorrow night we have the one and only David Jacobs here. What a great week. Man, alive. Did we really pull that off? Ralph Ellis, Dane Wigington, and David Jacobs. Wrap it up with a little John Rappaport on Thursday. Holy crap. Oh, yeah, coffee's good. I got a different vibe when I just roll into the studio with with, with seconds to spare. I'm out of breath. <laughs> Amped up, adrenaline pumping. You can follow us on Twitter at J Church Radio. That's what you want to do, at J Church Radio. And if you're over on the website, jimmychurchradio.com, you can go and like us on Facebook, YouTube, our YouTube channel. By the way, in case you haven't noticed, We've uh, been updating YouTube now every day. So whatever your choice is, whatever that drink of choice is, YouTube, the podcast, it's all there. Okay? You can go and do it, and we have stayed on top of it. It's pretty cool, actually. All right? so And you can go and, and do everything right there at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Very simple to find. The buttons are there, but you can always search Fade to Black or J Church Radio, whatever you got to do. All right. You can also email throughout the show, Jimmy and Jimmy Church Radio.com. Very simple, easy. And if it's good, it does. It makes its way into this studio, and I'll actually read it. Don't forget, when you follow us on Twitter, at J Church Radio, the sandbox is hashtag F2B. Nothing is funnier. Then when I get a tweet from somebody or an email saying, okay, I'm following you on Twitter, but how can I find the sandbox? I'm on the website. I don't know where to go. Where is the sandbox? Sandbox is hashtag F2B. Very simple. Uh, Get yourself tweet deck. And, you know, I read the warnings about tweet deck like it was, it was going to go software only or on the net. I, I did. I, I read that. Uh, I'm still using it as an application. Still running fine for me. I really don't want to go to the web version. Well, I know it's probably not any different. But um, anyway, any question or comments during the show for the guests, myself or Dane or myself, just use hashtag F2BQ. All right. 
Thank you for subscribing to the podcast, everybody. Uh, that is very, very cool. Help support the show. And, you know, it's $2 a month, and you have uh, close to 450 shows. We'll be up to 450 in 10 days. So 450 shows for $2 a month. I mean, I, I, if we could do it for free, we would. I, and I know it's funny when I get the emails from people. Hey, man. How come you charge for the podcast? Why can't everything be free, man? Why do you have, dude, why do you have commercials? I mean, I don't want to listen to commercials, and I don't want to pay for the podcast. And, and dude, I mean, you know, um, uh, seriously? <laughs> seriously? All right, support the show. Go to the podcast, $2 a month. You can check out our sponsors, Life Change Tea. Support the show. Go to Life Change Tea. Go to the specials page. Do what I do. Go get the colostrum and the moringa. Get that special. That's the one that you want. Go and get that special. All right? Use Jimmy, promo code Jimmy. Get free shipping on your order. Go and do it. It's, it's great. Help yourself. It's amazing stuff. And also Studio Dome, the surround sound speakers, and that package, which is a true wireless stereo technology that is the newest Bluetooth. Real stereo. Two speakers, full range, amazing. Two SBB2s, hard shell case, 129 bucks. End of story. Go and do it. JCRTWS is the promo code there. Then you even get free shipping. Best way to go. Next week, um, oh, oh man, Rita, I so want to say something. Oh, I just can't. Oh, it's killing me. Okay, next week, we have something very, very cool that we are doing. Oh, man. I'm going to get clearance. I'll, I'll tell you what we're doing next week. I, I, I need to get approval. Oh, man, they're not going to let me say anything. Dang it. Well, anyway, we're doing something really cool. Uh, next week before we go up to San Francisco to the New Living Expo. And uh, we leave next Friday for that. And uh, and we're doing so. <laughs> I can't. Oh, man. Let's just say this. No days off uh, for the next couple of weeks. And then uh, right after that, June 3rd through the 6th, at the end of May, a month later, contact in the desert. There you go. All right. All of our events are up on the website and oh by the way Rita um send that email in to me uh that we got today from Norway I mean I don't want to say the guy's name I don't think I can but he's probably listening right now and we got an invitation to uh to do a a, a Jimmy Church fade to black event in Norway what do you guys think about that go hang out with our Viking brethren? You know what I'm saying? Are you guys with me? Should we do this? I think we should. And uh, it's a really cool email. And uh, I don't know if we can officially say his name yet. No, Rita just said, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> okay. All right. Nope. Nope to everything, Rita. That's just, I can't talk at all. All right. Let's get the show cracking. Today. Today. James Franco is 38. Tim Curry is 70. I can't believe that. Nick Groff is 36. <laughs> Can you get on with the show? Yes, Rita, I'm getting on with the show. Kate Hudson today is 37. All right. A very special guest tonight, Dane Wigington. Been putting this show together for three years. Here he is today. It's going to be great. Tomorrow night, David Jacobs. Then, of course, Thursday night, Open Lines Fader Night with John Rappaport. On this day in history, 1993. That's right. We all remember this. At Mount Carmel in Waco, Texas, the FBI launches a tear gas assault on the Branch Davidian compound, setting it on fire and burning it to the ground. 80 Branch Div Davidians, including 22 children, die. Fader fact. When a single anti-Kim Jong-il graffiti was found in Pyongyang in North Korea in 2011. They locked down the entire city for three days. And that 
is a fader fact. All right. So we know what the movie Vaxxed is doing, right? Stirring things up. And uh, John Rappaport doing his thing. Dell B- Big Tree on the show last night. And, uh, you know, Vaxxed is, is causing problems. And as it should. At Tribeca Film Festival and, and everything else that's going down, right? And then it gets thrown out and pulled from the Houston uh, Film Festival in Houston. And it was pulled down because of the mayor's office. And it, the mayor's office, the city of Houston, was giving $50,000 in support for this film festival. And they said, we will pull our 50 grand, not the 50 grand from this year, the 50 grand for next year's festival. And the guy that was running the festival was like, dude, man, I need the 50 grand or, or, you know, next year's our 50th anniversary and, and we, we need the 50 grand. Yeah. 50 twice, by the way, I'm not making that up. And, and I need that 50 grand so we can do our 50th anniversary next year. So I just had to pull the festival. I mean, I had to pull the movie, I had to pull Vaxxed. And the Houston's, uh, the mayor's office said that they wanted the movie pulled because it would potentially curb vaccinations that were mandatory for the Houston school system. And that it would freak parents out because this movie is anti-vaccine, which is wrong. It's, it's not. And, and so they threatened to pull this 50 grand from next year. So that's why it got pulled. The mayor's office got involved in this. And I hope they're listening to this show right now the mayor's office, because they might be. Let me tell you why. I'm, I'm so angry about government, it, literally government and a mayor's office, censoring the public. Cannot do that. There are way too many things about this country that says that is a violation of our very basic rights. Our forefathers made sure that censoring would never happen in this country. They just got out of all of that. And they wanted to make sure. And then the mayor's office in Houston, Sylvester Turner, by the way, that's his name, decides to uh, put pressure on uh, the film festival. So this is what happened today. I reached out to Mayor Sylvester Turner today, myself, of Houston, Houston, Texas. And, of course, I want to know why, and I want to hear from him why he and his office decided to pressure and censor the public from seeing the movie Vaxxed. What right of it, of his, to even think about, consider, contemplate, or plan such a thing? You can't do it. You know, you have a few things. You know, you, you, when you become a public official. You know, you become the mayor of a city, maybe of a city like Houston. They give you a friggin' rule book. And in that rule book, there's like three or four things you cannot do. One thing you can do, you can smoke crack with a prostitute and you can get reelected. That's okay. But one of the things you cannot do is censor the public. You cannot do it. But he chose to. So I reached out, called his office today. I did, literally. And the phone rings, which, as it turns out, uh, it wasn't his office. It was the 311 call center. Now, it's listed as his office number, the official office number of Mayor Sylvester Turner of Houston, Texas. You can go to the official website. It's available on the official Houston website. It's got his picture there and everything. It's really nice. It's very officially, if you know what I'm saying, right? So I call the number, and and then I get the, the voice prompt. Hi, you've called the 311 call center for Houston, Texas. If this is an emergency, hang up and call 911. If you need trash collected at your house, press 2. If you need this, press 3. If you need this, press 4. If you would like to speak to, so you know, I go through the whole thing. If you would like to speak to somebody, press 9. I was like, holy crap. I press 9. And I go, go on hold. And after about five minutes, 
and it wasn't that bad because they had pretty cool music, nice music, you know, by the way, the good mayor and the 311 call center uh, kind of rocks, right? Okay, so um, five minutes go by, and somebody actually picks up. His name was Tony, and I told Tony who I was, who I worked for. I made some stuff up, by the way. You know, I said I was Anderson Cooper or somebody from CNN, whatever. Don't care. No, I didn't. You know, I said it was me. I did say CNN. No, I didn't. Anyway, Tony gets excited, right? Really? Okay. All right. And he says, he knows exactly who I need to talk to. I need to talk to the person that handles the scheduling for the media. A woman named Martha. I said, really, Tony? Because, yeah, man, I'm, I'm a, I, literally his exact words. I'm going to hook you up with Martha. Here is her phone number. Literally, he gives me her phone number. And he goes, okay. I said, do you want me to call her right now? He goes, no. I'll put you right through. Puts me on hold. Comes back on. And the good Tony says, I'm serious. He's so excited. Right? He says, uh, okay, uh, she's not in her office. But uh, would you like to go to her voicemail? No, he says she's at lunch. And do you want to? I said, of course I do, Tony, brah. You know, since we're bros now. And thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. All right. You have a nice day. No, you have a nice day. Thank you so much, Tony. Puts me through. I leave a nice voice message. And uh, it, was, it was nice. You know, this is Jimmy Church, blah, 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 fade to black, KGRA, KJCR, you know, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. 30 minutes later, my phone rings. I'm not making this up either. My phone rings. And this is what I get. Hi, Jimmy. It's Martha. I said, hey, <laughs> Martha, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good, Jimmy. How can I help you? And I said, well, you know, I'd like to uh, uh, schedule an interview. Well, yes, Jimmy, the mayor's available. When would you like to speak with him? And, Jimmy, what would you like to talk to him about? I said, well, Martha, you know, since we're friends, I'd like to discuss the movie Vaxxed. There's a pause. Uh, Jimmy, hang on. Uh, you need to talk to Janice Evans. She handles everything. I said, uh, but Martha, I thought you handled the media, she says. And it's no longer Jimmy anymore, by the way. You need to talk to Janice. I'll transfer you transfer right now. I said, I said, whole, whole, Martha, don't you handle the media? There's, it's a deadline. She transfers me to a dial tone. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Then the dial tone ends. And then I get this. Deadline. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, no Martha. No, no Janice Evans. Thank you, Tony. Uh, today, we have no Mayor Sylvester Turner. Um, I'm going to keep the pressure on the mayor's office. I have all of the numbers and everything here now that... They mistakenly, you know, gave me all the direct lines, so I don't have to go through the three one one call center. And I'm set up, and I'm going to keep the pressure on the mayor's office, and I'm going to find out why the mayor felt like he was entitled to put himself above the Constitution and the rights of every American citizen, and uh, and censor the public. I want to find out, and I'm going to. All right, okay. There's a conspiracy here. You know, what's really great about this, and I know it's big pharma, is it, is it Egypt? Is it, is it uh, uh, U U UFOs? Is it time travel? Uh, it's, it's, it's all a conspiracy. And that's one of the reasons why Dane is on the show tonight. There is something going on out there. There is somebody making decisions. And I'm going to get to the bottom of it. All right. Apple, by the way, has poached a top British Tesla executive. 
That's right. They want to outsmart Tesla the, uh, in the, with uh, electric cars. And that's it. And they're making a move. It's called the Apple car. The California company is reported to have been working on an electric vehicle for several years. And now it's hired former vice president of vehicle engineering at Tesla. His name, Chris Porritt. And Elon Musk came back today and says that Apple is the Tesla graveyard, quote, claiming, quote, if you don't make it at Tesla, you go to work at Apple. And I'm not kidding, end quote. Musk is pissed. <laughs> he is he is friggin' angry. But Apple's going for it. It's a, it's a good-looking car. If any of the uh, advanced uh, pictures are anything close to what it really is, it's uh, pretty amazing looking. All right. Oh, man, I love coffee. Thousands of gallons of radioactive waste are estimated to have leaked in at a Manhattan Project-era nuclear storage tank in Washington State over the weekend, triggering an alarm, by the way, and causing one former worker to label it as catastrophic. The expanded leak was first detected after an alarm went off at the Hanford Nuclear Reservation Sunday. And yesterday, workers were preparing to pump the waste out of the troubled area. They were also trying to determine why the leak became worse. It's unclear exactly how much waste has spilled out, but estimates place the amount at somewhere between 3 and 35, 3,500 gallons of glowing nuclear waste. You live in Washington State? You need to be Googling right now the Hanford Nuclear Reservation. You need to find out where that is coming from. The Department of Homeland Security and top cybersecurity firm uh, Trend Micro have advised all Windows PC users on planet Earth to uninstall Apple's QuickTime video player, to uninstall it now, immediately. This is it. After two new bugs were found in the software, in a blog post published this past Thursday, Trend Micro Security said that Apple was no longer issuing security updates for QuickTime. And despite the presence of the bugs, Apple says no. Trend Micro said the bugs could be used to launch attacks on PCs if users visit a compromised web page or open a tainted file. Trend Micro said it was not aware of any cases yet where the bugs have been exploited by hackers, but now the hackers know. And the warning does not apply to QuickTime on Mac operating systems. Department of Homeland Security's United States Computer Emergency Readiness Team, U.S. CERT, put out a similar alert Thursday warning that Windows PC users were vulnerable to viruses and other threats due to the security flaws. Literally. They have instructed every PC user on planet Earth to uninstall QuickTime. Now, after reading this, I jump on it because I have a bunch of Windows 10 computers and uh, here in the studio, and I still run a couple of Windows 7 computers for my own reasons, and I couldn't find QuickTime. It used to always be there. So I don't know if the updates with uh, uh, 10, first off, if QuickTime is there. I'm not too sure that it is. And then with the updates uh, that just ran on my computer's uh, uh, um, hard drives over the last couple of days, I did notice that they did the automatic updates on the 7s. There's no QuickTime there. Strange, isn't it? Search the entire hard drive. Nothing. Nothing. Not only not installed, just not there. And I found that pretty interesting. The United States Department of Agriculture has said, and this, this, this right here bums me out. Listen to me. The United States Department of Agriculture has said that it will not regulate a genetically modified mushroom designed to be more resilient and resistant 
to browning. The GMO shroom was created using gene altering, the, the gene altering tool CRISPR. C R I S P R. Go check it out. The USDA recently told Yinong Yang, a plant pathologist at the Pennsylvania State University, that the common white button mushroom, which he engineered, will not have to undergo the department's regulatory process. I'm not making this up. The white mushroom that you buy in the store, the, 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 the white mushroom. Yang created the mushroom by targeting a family of genes that encodes an enzyme causing browning. Yang successfully eliminated six uh, uh, enzymes, reducing their effect on the mushroom by 30%. Now, this is according to the journal Nature. So, no process to go through. The USDA says we don't care on something as common as the white mushroom that everybody cooks with. They do this to my creminis, and we got a problem. But I use white mushrooms in everything. So does re. And this is freaking me out. So now I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's nothing, no approval process. I don't care if my white mushrooms turn a little bit brown. I don't care. What are we doing to ourselves? Unbelievable. All right, in in some of the biggest news of the week, and then I'm going to get out of here and get Dane in here. Microsoft has filed a lawsuit against the United States Justice Department claiming that the government's authority to block technology companies from notifying customers when their personal data has been accessed is unconstitutional. Filed in federal court last Thursday, the lawsuit alleged that the federal government is increasingly using search warrants to comb through customer information that is held by Microsoft and that it is essentially banning the company from ever letting people know about the government's behavior. Microsoft said that over the last year and a half, U.S. courts have ordered it not to notify customers that their data was obtained by the government. And they did this a total of 2,576 times. About 68% of these gag orders, or 1,752 of them, did not feature any sort of fixed end date. I thought I'd never say it, but go Bill Gates and go Microsoft. Unbelievable. This is fade to block and get out of here so I can get uh, Dane Wigington in here. This is Bespoke Radio for the masses on the game changer network and kgra the planet i'm your streaming church follow me right now on twitter at j church radio hashtag f2b is the sandbox tonight dane wigington right after this short break stay right there Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. What's up, revolutionaries? It's me, Jimmy Church. Do you have an IRS or state tax issue? Well, I did, and I called national tax experts. My problems were fixed, done, done. Fini and man, I got to tell you, it was a relief. National tax experts are a recognized tax office that services clients in all 50 states. It doesn't matter where you live. Give them a call. I'm telling you, they take the time to understand each and every client's individual financial status as well as their financial goals. And that's exactly what you need, my brother, when you're taking on the evil three letter. 
So, seriously, give them a call today at 1-877-909-5444. Again, 1-877-909-5444. Or go check out their website, www.nattaxexperts.com. That's N-A-T-T-A-X-E-X-P-E-R-T-S dot com. Tell them Jimmy sent you. Poor water quality is a major health issue, and it's only getting worse. Municipalities can't keep up, standards have dropped, and pollutants are increasing. Where does it all end? It ends by keeping the pollutants outside of your home with HydroCare's advanced systems available at Wave Home Solutions. No less than the best purification materials and processes have been developed by HydroCare to provide you with healthy, clean water for drinking, cooking, and showering. HydroCare far surpasses the competition in removing chlorine, odors, iron, lead, chemicals, lime scale, and much more. Don't settle for less when it comes to your water. We'll take care of the toughest water problems for you, whether it's from a city or well source. Satisfaction guaranteed. For more information, call 888-997-WAVE. That's 888-997-WAVE. Or go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. Home Solutions for a healthy, comfortable home. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Chase Klutsky with Fate Magazine Radio, and you're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA digital broadcast station, where the Fade or Nots rock. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Matthew. You're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black, I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Dane Wigington is here. You can follow us on Twitter at JChurchRadio. As you know, we burn through two, three, four, five thousand 5,000 tweets a night, and it's going to be one of those nights here on the show. It's going to be great. Dane has a lot to say. He has a background in solar energy. He's a former employee of Bechtel Power Corporation and was a licensed contractor in California and Arizona. A decade ago, Dane focused his efforts and energy on the geoengineering issue when he began to lose very significant amounts of solar uptake at his home. And also the forest around him started to freak out. And he began testing and research into the geoengineering issue. He is the lead researcher over at geoengineeringwatch.org and has investigated all levels of geoengineering, solar radiation management, and global ionosphere heaters like HARP. I'd like to welcome, for the first time, three years putting this show together, Dane Wigington. Dane, welcome to Fade to Black. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for helping us to uh, address this issue while there's still time to do any good. Yeah, right. Things, times are changing, my friend, and and we, we can just feel it. And certainly living here in Southern California, which is a, a large focus of your work is on the West Coast. It's all around the world, but the West Coast is definitely an anomaly. There's something going on out here, and we can witness it every single day. You just walk outside and know that uh, there's something strange going on. But before we get started, Dane, uh, you get the fade to black first time guest disclaimer, man. You know, when you're on with us next time, you don't get it. So right now it's an honor, which is, is this is you and I sitting on my couch having uh, an important discussion where we start, we start, where we end, we end. We're going to end as friends. Are you ready to go? Ready when you are. All right. What I would like to do, Dane, um, instead of uh, going backwards to your house and the collection of solar power, because we're going to talk about that later on in the show. But what I would like to do is is start here for the audience, because your message is clear it's compelling, it's comprehensive, but at times it's technical too as well. So for the audience, I want to kind of clear up some 
uh, terminology and wording that you're going to be using for the rest of the night. I have I've listened to your presentations over the years and I and I've had to even myself go back and look at some of the terms. And then also, you know what you do do? is you explain the terms as you move along, too, as well, which is very cool. So I thought, let's get that out of the way at the very beginning, and let's talk about some of these different uh, terms and, and definitions. Good to go. And on, on this subject, if you want to convey this message to others and to help wake them up, which is imperative, the science terms are essential to use. So with the Kim Trails term, although it sounds more descriptive, it's – it's not a science term. It leads people straight to conspiracy theory and hoax if they go to Google this term or search this term online. Climate engineering, good term, easy to understand. Solar radiation management, SRM, stratospheric aerosol geoengineering. So these are the science terms that describe the intentional modification of Earth's climate system. But climate engineering, Jimmy, is a very good universal term, very self-evident. And again, if you pass on the science terms to people, They'll come to hard science and they'll understand this issue is real. So semantics are important. Yeah, and SRM, uh, and and I want to talk about the nuclear uh, uh, terminology too as well with rain and droplets and snow um, and discuss that too before we get started because we're going to do all of this tonight over the next couple of hours. Um, uh, geoengineering, what is the definition of that? The, the term is intentionally confusing. This is what the power structure does so people don't really understand what it means, but it's the in intentional modification of Earth systems on a, on a planetary scale. So under the category of geoengineering, we have, again, climate engineering. Right. We have ocean fertilization, another form of geoengineering that many are unaware of. And this is going on now as well. The power structure is doing whatever they want because there's no one to tell them they can't. Right. So they've been genetically modifying our planet for 70 years. They made the choice for us. We had no say in the matter. So what's used, the, the same materials used for solar radiation management, Jimmy, the aerosols that are sprayed into the skies, even above oceans, to try to deflect some of the sun's incoming thermal radiation fall to the sea surface. The same materials are then utilized, it appears from all available data, as ocean fertilization to try to force the ocean to take up more CO2. And you know the oceans are dangerously acidic right now. It's destroying kelp forests, um, sea life with shells trying to form their shells. I mean, the ocean's 30% more acidic than it should be. So Anytime you throw a wrench into the natural systems, you get a bad result, and that's what we're getting on every level. So geoengineering, again, implies a number of different forms of modifying Earth's life support systems. In a, in a mechanical sense, I would assume. In a very toxic sense Right, as well. right, yeah. right, right. Um, and SRM, which is so, so important, um, in, in, it's, a, it's a broad use, it's a broadly used term, but it, it, it almost has to be because it affects so much. So when we talk about SRM, what, what are the applications there? It's high in the atmosphere, it's low in the atmosphere, it's dealing with metals and not and so forth. Um, again, it's such a broad term, but what, when we talk about SRM, how widely used is that? It's global on a scale that's unimaginable. Right now, the term global dimming, another science term that many are unfamiliar with, which indicates the amount of direct sunlight that no longer reaches the surface of the planet as compared to five de decades ago. That figures from 20 to 30 percent, depending on the study and depending on the region. So the planet is literally encased in a toxic cocoon of reflective metals. And in the the term engineering, Jimmy, is far too dignified for what's really going on because this is simply haphazard planetary decimation with with no oversight, uh, no rational regulation of any type. I mean, this is this is simply an assault against the web of life. But uh, the global dimming term again describes just how much material is in the air, and and some of that material is from industrialized civilization. No question about that. The, the atmosphere doesn't know whether it's got a particle in it from a smokestack or sprayed out of the back of an aircraft that's geoengineering the skies. But mathematically speaking, the vast majority does appear to be from geoengineering and the stated goal by internationally recognized geoengineers like David Keith from Harvard was to put 20 million tons of aluminum nanoparticulates into the sky annually. Why is aluminum their material of choice? Because it has a very high albedo, very high reflectivity, has a low coagulation rate, means the particles don't clump together. 
and it's in, in very abundant supply. So again, uh, they don't really take into account the consequences, Jimmy. They simply do whatever they wish. Now, the... Uh... The okay, I'm going to get very, very specific here. There are some things that we just grew up learning about and knowing about jet stream, ocean currents that, that these these are consistent. This is Mother Nature and we depend on this uh, uh, just like the sun comes up in the morning. Right. And it's not that way anymore. The weather across the United States globally it has changed and those those jet streams have changed and what affects one side of the country will have an effect on the other side of the country is this is not my imagination i don't think i'm watching these weather patterns and they are not what i grew up with am i imagining this absolutely not imagining it the, the natural systems could not be more derailed than they are at this point so any intervention with the system at any point in the system would alter the entire system. But in fact, we have an intervention on a planetary scale everywhere. So the entire system has been completely disrupted and derailed. And so we have, for example, things, Jimmy, that the public has been taught and conditioned to believe, for example, with ozone depletion, that that's related to CFCs most directly. And the data indicates clearly ozone destruction is most directly caused by climate engineering and the particulates. So that's not only destroying ozone, it's altering jet stream movement. Now we, when you have altered upper level wind currents, that alters ocean currents. Now we have warm water pumping straight into the Arctic, thawing methane on the sea floor, which is releasing, releasing formerly frozen methane hydrate into the atmosphere. You have a massive chain reaction. It starts to trigger positive feedback loops. And the more of this type of destruction they cause, the more they ramp up these programs. It's a very, very dangerous cycle that will that is leading to helping to bring us to a short-term global extinction. And that's a mathematical certainty if we stay on this course, Jimmy. About 20 years ago, I remember reading about, you know, methane being potentially released down in the Antarctic. And, and, and I thought, okay, that's just alarmist. That's fear stuff. Uh, it's, and, and sure enough, that's exactly what's going on today. Strange prediction, but it's coming true. It is. And what's important for people to remember in regard to climate engineering, which is sold as a mitigation for all that's happening, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Climate engineering is making a bad situation far worse overall and contaminating the entire planet at the same time. And again, I, I want to state this in the beginning of your show. I don't want anyone to believe anything I'm saying. I'm simply asking to investigate. And for those who don't believe the climate system is damaged and who don't believe climate engineering is going on, quite simply, you're wrong. You need to investigate and you need to help us to bring these issues to light or we'll very soon, none of us, have anything left to salvage. About a month ago here in Burbank, uh, uh, I, you know, we had this, you know, it, it started to turn the, uh, the the weather, right? It was warming up and we were having these 80 degree days, 85 for a few weeks and summer's here and it, it was great. And I swear, Dane, on my mother's grave, I walked outside, it's 85 degrees and I look up in Burbank and I see the crisscross pattern in the sky. And I turn to my wife and I go, check that out. Chemtrails. The next day, Dane, 50 degrees. It was freezing. It, overnight, overnight in Burbank, it was like 40. We went from 85 to it felt like I stuck my face in my freezer when I opened it. It was immediate. Again, is, is that kind of control with aerosols and spraying, is it that immediate and, and, and we see those kinds of effects right away? Absolutely. In fact, when you have, you have what's called chemical ice nucleation for weather modification, the patents for this process have existed since 1950, one of them assigned to NASA. So when you have enough moisture in the air and that moisture is chemically nucleated, it causes what's termed an endothermic reaction, an, an energy absorbing reaction. And that creates cold, dense air that descends to the ground. We all know cold air is heavy, just like the open freezer you have in your market where everything's frozen with no top on it because the cold air sits there. So it creates a shallow layer of cold on the ground, confuses the population as to the true extent of the climate. 
And these are short term events. They're highly toxic. We know the snow is extremely toxic in most cases. And again, it's because of these chemical ice nucleating materials. And China openly announced they were doing this, Jimmy. And anybody can look this up. Again, I don't want anybody to believe me. Search Chinese scientists create artificial snowstorm. Their Bureau of Weather Modification openly announced this until they did a billion dollars worth of damage to Beijing by turning what should have been rain into snow. These processes are real. The patents for them exist. So in the process of doing this, again, they can they can confuse the population and some of the Extreme examples of this, Jimmy, Amarillo, Texas on May, th May 1st, 2013 was 100 degrees on the ground, all-time record high, snowed the next day. Right. It's amazing that that can happen, which is uh, something that has been going on here in Southern California. The light switches on, off, on, off, on, off. I've lived here for 35 years. I know the weather patterns. And things are starting to change here. As we know, we just went through a, a drought, a drought that I, I firmly feel this isn't conspiracy tinfoil hat stuff. I think it was intentional for a lot of different reasons, which I'm going to talk to you about now. And then over the last three or four months, suddenly we've got rain and the drought is over. And that's not a coincidence. There is something going on here. And they're there. I think. Are they artificially trying to have an ebb and flow on agriculture and money and, and control that and the food system, as well as uh, control the weather itself and demonstrate that they can do that? Is it a combination of both of those? And more. Yes, you're exactly right. And, and thank you for bringing it up in that manner, because it's imperative that people don't think dichotomously of this or that equation. Many, many agendas are being carried out at once, and we need to remember that so that we don't discredit ourselves by thinking that this issue fits in one box or another. In regard to the drought, we can debate the various agendas being carried out, but the fact that climate engineering in regard to the droughts is the root cause cannot be debated. On a warming planet, and our planet is not just warming, it's a total meltdown, and climate engineering is making that worse. There's lots of causes. I'm not singling out climate engineering. The human race has been very bad stewards for the planet. But you have to have more moisture in the atmosphere on a warming planet. The atmosphere carries 7% more moisture for every degree of warming centigrade. Since the mid-40s, when these programs were launched, Jimmy, because these are desiccant materials, they absorb atmospheric moisture, atmospheric relative humidity has gone down, not up. That defies the laws of physics, can't happen without geoengineering. So the drought is not over in California, absolutely not over. They want us to believe it's subsided, but it has not. Where I live in Northern California, on the east side of Lake Shasta, we are 250 inches of rain short for the last eight years, 250. And even though some of the valley locations have picked up normal rainfall this year, that has not happened in the mountains. We're not getting orographic enhancement, which is the increased, exponentially increased rainfall from the clouds moving over the topography because there's so many particulates in the atmosphere, too many condensation nuclei, and that tends to migrate that moisture. And they try to migrate it east, creating the largest SRM cloud cover they can. So we are not out of the drought. The drought is absolutely a result of climate engineering, not global warming. And I'm not denying global warming. I'm not denying the many anthropogenic factors affecting global warming. I'm simply saying that on a warming planet, you must have more overall rainfall, not less. We have less because of climate engineering. Are they intentionally, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, uh, wrong word. Are they unintentionally screwing things up because they are trying to fix a problem? Is, is, no. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are they, I do. Yeah. I do. And I would argue, no. Is, is there any benevolence in these programs I would argue the answer is no. These programs are about power and control and hiding the damage already done from these programs of power and control by doing these programs on an even larger level and doing even more damage. The people involved with these programs, especially our military brothers and sisters whom we really, really need to reach and make understand that what they are participating in is literally not just ecocide or genocide, but omnicide. They are destroying the planet and the entire web of life. And they're being told, Jimmy, that they're doing something benevolent, something for the common good. Couldn't be further from the truth. There is no benevolence in these programs whatsoever. And there are the, this is an important distinction to make too, Jimmy. 
are there disaster capitalists involved with this? Monsanto, multinational corporations that are buying up land that's been droughted out uh, because of these programs. Yes, there are disaster capitalists. Is that the primary motive behind these programs? Much, much bigger than that. So people need to remember that it, it's it's a very multi-layered equation and uh, the the ultimate consequences of this will be unimaginable if we continue on this road. About uh, two years ago, uh, somebody had leaked to me some photographs of the interiors of a couple of planes. And I, I think at that point, I might have even sent those to you and uh, reached out to you. But that's that's not the point here. So I, I post the pictures and I was immediately attacked. It was it was crazy. And and one of the points that was made, uh, and it was a variety of of people that were attacking and 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 being very negative. One of them was a pilot that said, "Look, man, no pilot would do this. Uh, I'm a I'm a commercial pilot. I've I've been in the military. Would not do this. There's no way. I've never heard of it, and it has never occurred. Is it possible that the pilots?" themselves do not know about the flights that they are making, that they are just merely a taxi driver, right? They're just flying the planes and, and may not know what's going on in back. Is that possible? In many cases, uh, we absolutely believe that to be the scenario that's happening. I, sp I spoke to a KC-135 pilot face-to-face -face who absolutely had no idea what he was doing up there on his flights. And when he went back to ask questions about this issue Apparently, uh, that was the wrong thing to do. And the last information I got from him, he was medicated behind a desk, no longer on flight duty. Right. So we absolutely believe that to be the case, especially when we have commercial aircraft involved. And we do. And we know we have them involved because we have film footage of aerosol dispersions being turned on and off. We have up-close photographs of the nozzles mounted on the pylons directly above the engine exhaust stream to make this look like quote unquote condensation. And whenever you wish, Jimmy, I can explain the basic mechanics of the high bypass turbofan jet engine, which makes a condensation trail behind that engine nearly impossible, except under the most extreme circumstances. I'm posting right now in Twitter. I want everybody to see this. This is the, uh, I'm going to do this in real time. I'm sorry, uh, Dane to uh, do this, but uh, I think it's important. I I stole your spray nozzle uh, pick from your website, and That's I'm what it's for. yeah I'm tweeting it out now. That my friends is a spray nozzle on the back of an engine, and what's what's interesting here. And I read uh, it's already now. This is this has now gone viral. Just to let you know, Dave, that what's interesting here. And I read your little piece on the spray nozzle on the back of the engine, and, and what I thought uh, this is it was the opposite of what you posted. I'd like your comment. I I thought that not necessarily maybe for hiding you know, in the exhaust trail, but also dispersion and using the exhaust fans and the exhaust coming off of this to widely disperse. And I thought it was an ingenious thing. I know that's my polluted brain going dark, but I just thought how efficient could you, you know, what, what a bigger fan could you have than a frigging, you know, jet engine on a commercial jetliner? Uh, you're exactly right. You're absolutely on target. I mean, it, it kills both birds with the same stone, and and uh, I, your hypothesis is completely on target. What no question. Uh, what what type of plane, and and where did you get this uh, image from? Because it's about as frightening of an image as you can have. What happened? I lost. Him. Oh, I, I'm here, Dane. Okay. All right. You know what, Dane? If you can't hear me. Show here that we hooked up? Uh, yeah. Okay. Dane, yeah. we'll take a commercial break and, and we'll or reset. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Let me mute Dane here. Let's go ahead and take a break and I'll get Dane back. This is Fade to Black, Dane Wigington. And you know what? That just goes to show you. Three-letter agency shutting us down. They ain't going to do it. It's Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Take a quick break. Reset. When I come back, Dane Wigington. Geoengineeringwatch.org. I'll be right back. This is 
Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. Hello, I'm Kate and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here, repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black, on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. Hey folks, Life Change T here, reminding you that colds and flus suck. Feeling lousy sucks, and allergies really can be annoying. What if you could change that? What if you could drink something that changed the sick and tired scenario? Well, you can change how you feel with a little help from Life Change Tea. Life Change Tea is a drink you make, you control, and you drink. There are eight organic herbs that blend together and give you what you need to fight the flus and colds of this world. Less sickness is more relief. Life Change Tea can help with high blood pressure, constipation, high cholesterol, and much, much more. Just by drinking the tea. Read the numerous testimonies at GetTheTea.com. If you're tired of feeling lousy, order right now at GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Or you can call us at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. If you've heard this commercial more than once and someone's trying to tell you something, it's time to get well. GetTheTea.com. Imagine no longer being tied down to your computer, but having the freedom to take live talk radio with you anywhere you go. TalkStream Live introduces our first ever iPhone application. The talk shows you follow now follow you. And your iPhone is now the fastest and easiest way to stay connected to the best talk radio on the Internet. Let TalkStream Live transform the way you listen to radio. Listen to live talk shows 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Mobile talk radio from TalkStream Live. Now available in the iTunes App Store. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. <laughs> We're of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. What's up, Fade or Nots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full-range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this. It's amazing. It's just $129, and use the promo code JCRTWS, and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back, Lee Tepe. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, the planet. Welcome back to Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Dane Wigington, geoengineeringwatch.org is the website. They can't stop us. Follow us on Twitter at J Church Radio. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox. Dane, right before they tried to shut us down, um, I I was asking you about your contacts and and whistleblowers and your inside info where do you get your your photographs and your videos we've gotten them from a number of locations and obviously from some of those videos they're taken from the back of an or from the, another aircraft behind for example one that's from a kc-10 from rosario marciano from italy has gotten us quite a few of the good video footage clips that we have, but others have come from people that are 
part of the flight crews that have released these air, aircraft videos and they've come from a number of locations. We're just glad for the people that have had the courage to release them, and we're certainly putting them to use. Uh, Cyprus last month, Dane, as you as you know, uh, Cyprus freaked out, and their uh, government got together, and they had a uh, one of the members of their parliament got together and said, "Hey, we have over one of the constituents had contacted uh, you know uh, uh, the government there and said." we've got these uh, chemtrail overflights, you know, crisscrossing over Cyprus. What's going on? And they actually sat down and questioned. They didn't know about what was going on in their very own skies for a sovereign country. How common is that? And would that be uh, would that be somebody from the United States or is that an international uh, corporation or government? And and how could Cyprus not have control over what's going on in their own skies? Certainly some of the elected officials may not know what's happening, but other people in their militaries absolutely know what's happening. I mean, they know what's going on in their airspace, certainly. That's why you have leaders of countries like Ahmadinejad on the floor of the U.N., stating emphatically that their countries were being droughted out by NATO weather modification programs. These countries all have militaries. They know exactly what's going on in their skies. So although the elected officials, just like they do here, Jimmy, pretend that they don't know what's going on, and some of them may not because they're just puppets, as we all know, but other people within those governments absolutely know what's going on. And as far as who's behind the programs, again, you have certain hubs. The United States is the primary hub. But you have Russia involved, you have China involved, all the NATO countries involved. And when countries don't cooperate, and there was some information that indicated at one point Ireland was not cooperating, and who was the first to be financially crashed? Ireland. And we have also data that indicated Mexico was showing resistance to these programs just prior to the swine flu outbreak. Post swine flu outbreak, the spraying commenced again in earnest. So you're not allowed to not go along with these programs. Uh, this is the biggest elephant in the room. The fact that we have a population that can't see what's so incredibly visible above their heads uh, is astounding. It's truly astounding. How much of it is military and, you know, a direct weapon? Well, anytime you modify the weather, you, you have to consider weather modification as weather warfare because the materials used are toxic. You then must consider weather warfare as biological warfare. So, again, we're back to the basic premise that there is no good in these programs. It's simply about power and control. Military is certainly orchestrating it, but you have other corporations involved. For example, Jefferson is a subsidiary of Boeing. Jefferson coordinates all global flights. I had a face-to-face -face with a Jefferson executive after 15 minutes of peripheral conversation. The moment I, I mentioned the word geoengineering, he turned his back and walked away. So these people know exactly what they're doing, but their paycheck and their pension is too important for them to stop. Is uh, the, the, the weather in North Korea, I know this sounds a bit strange, but They've had a they've had a fifty year drought, right? I mean, they they can't grow anything there. They have the strangest weather only in North Korea. Everything else around there is green, fluff, and and productive. North Korea can't grow. Civilization starving. They have no uh, production of food. There's no money. the The economy is is all of this a direct effect of geoengineering. Once you intervene with the climate system, you have to take responsibility for the whole system because we have no natural weather at this point. And that's really a mathematical fact. It's inarguable. So let's, let's look at some other countries that would be considered adversarial to the U.S., like Libya, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria. Is it a coincidence that all those countries, in fact, all of them that were the countries named by General Wesley Clark a week after 9-11 as being the, the Middle Eastern Eurasian countries that were going to be taken down in the coming years, is it a coincidence that every one of those countries was exposed to record-shattering drought before the destabilization and the takeovers? That's not a coincidence. So right. again, this is weather warfare. And, and let's take that clock back even further, Jimmy, to the sub-Saharan African countries that were all droughted out Again, in a warming world where there should be more rain, not less. That's the planet's response mechanism. That's the laws of physics. 
Is it a coincidence that all these countries where the U.S. has boots on the ground were all exposed to this type of weather cataclysm? Some countries, different cataclysms, for example, the Philippines, where we had Cyclone Haiyan in 2014 that strengthened very anomalously right before it made landfall, cutting a swath right through the country. U.S. moves in under humanitarian pretext, starts setting up permanent bases. Now they're using Taiwan to poke at China. Uh, this is all part of the plan. And what's frightening is when we discuss, and I kind of want to jump into harp a little bit uh, right now, uh, but the ability to superheat the atmosphere, and especially once you have uh, heavy metals up there too, as well, and you're talking about degrees, we're not you know, we're not talking about 150 degrees. In some instances, we're talking thousands of degrees. And there's no way that you can't affect one part of the sky and not have it affect the opposite somewhere else. And and so when we're talking about superheating the ionosphere, what, what, what are the real stats here? How hot is it actually getting? And what is the damage that is being done? Well, they're tearing the atmosphere apart. And we have, for example, that some of the military data on HARP indicates that they can heat the ionosphere to something in the order of 15,000 degrees Fahrenheit over regions as much as four to 500 square miles. So imagine the damage this is inflicting and how can they cause that much heating? Because the ionosphere is electrically charged and the transmission of the radio frequency signals causes an electrical chain reaction. And the ionization of the atmosphere with these conductive particles with the exposure to the radio frequency signal starts to turn the atmosphere into more of a, a plasma in many cases. So we have institutions, Jimmy, like MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, reporting, for example, that directly above the epicenter of the Japanese earthquake in 2011, there was extremely anomalous atmospheric heating in the days prior to the quake. And of course, academia can't figure this out because they won't admit to the ionosphere heaters at all. So how catastrophic are these weapons? And we know that the transmission of radio frequency signals into a seismically sensitive zone can cause seismic activity. So are we not talking about weapons of unimaginable destruction when we have massive pieces of data like this from internationally recognized institutions like MIT staring us in the face. What what does that do uh, when HARP is doing 15,000 degrees? I can't even wrap my brain around how hot that is. What does that do to wildlife and, and the animal kingdom? I mean, that, that's got to have a ripple effect straight down to uh, planet Earth. Well, we're, again, we're talking about the ionosphere, which is a long way up, but as these, as the decimation continues to build up, for example, with the protective layers of the atmosphere like the ozone layer, and now we're seeing unimaginably high UV radiation at the surface. Right. So we have, we have multi layers of UV radiation, UVA, UVB, UVC. Below UVC, you have X ray. We're told by all major monitoring agencies like NOAA, NASA, WHO that we should see no more than 5% of incoming UV radiation as UVB. We're seeing 50%, 55%, unimaginably high readings. NASA in 2014 finally reported that 11 years earlier, in 2003, they recorded UV measurements on the surface of the planet that were comparable to Mars. Think about that. It took them 11 years to report that. What else aren't they reporting? So we know also with anecdotal data that we, we have the Cambrian layers being burnt off of trees, native trees. The sun-exposed side is being completely fried. The bark is fried off the tree. Trees are dropping their foliage. They're, they're uh, dead limbs appearing everywhere. We have a lack of growth with native grasses. Some plants aren't sprouting at all. We have plankton die-off, also directly related to the massive UV radiation. Global plankton populations, Jimmy, are down about 50 to 60 percent. No plankton, no life on Earth. That's pretty simple. Yeah, and that's, and that's my point that I'm trying to drive home. It, it, it sounds isolated, right? It's the ionosphere. It's 15,000. But, but it affects everything in the system. 
and if you start at the basic levels of things and it goes all the way to terra firma and trees are being burned, uh, th that affects the insects, which, inf uh, you know, then the animals, and it goes all the way to the water. It's not simply heating up the atmosphere, the ionosphere, that it's not affecting every. It affects everything. It can't not. It can't not. And that's why I'm focused on this issue. There's so many people in the world right now focused on so many different issues going so many different directions. But I would argue, and I, I have made this argument countless times, if we know we have a gaping hole in the bottom of the boat and that boat is climate engineering, if we don't focus on that, nothing else you do on the deck of that ship matters. Nothing. Nothing. We, ha we have to deal with this issue. It's tearing Earth's life support systems apart. And the military industrial complex is too invested to turn back. This is the ultimate weapon of war for them. They can win a battle without the opposing country ever, most of the opposing country, I should say, ever realizing that they are at war when you can shut off the rainfall. And that's exactly what they're doing. And, and the other part of what they're doing is to try, I've spoken directly to one of the architects of these programs from Oak Ridge Labs, off the record and part of it on the record, which I published. But one of their goals is to reduce atmospheric RH, atmospheric relative humidity, because water vapor is a greenhouse gas. But this is the sort of myopic tunnel vision view that you have in the pharmaceutical industry that tries to treat one symptom while making the overall scenario exponentially worse. So they, they do this, Jimmy, because you remember after 9-11 when, uh, I don't know if you ever saw this study, but there was a very unique study done in the days after 9-11 when the aircraft were shut down as far as how fast the daytime high temperatures rose over the U.S. Have you ever seen that study? I, I did see that, yes. So for your listeners that don't know, daytime highs went up about 2 degrees Fahrenheit, nighttime lows also descended to a slightly lesser degree. That's what we would expect as these aerosols settle out of the atmosphere. So for the climate engineers, that's justification for them to continue these programs. That's their quote-unquote proof that they're needed. But that's a, a very narrow-minded and mis, mistaken viewpoint, if you will, in that two to three days is not even close to enough time for the hydrological cycle of the planet to resume so that you have the lower-level cumulus clouds that actually cool – Jimmy, when you have a big, white, puffy cloud float over you on a hot day and completely shade you out, you can immediately feel a radical drop in temperature, yes? Yes, absolutely. Love it. On the flip side, when you have these silvery white skies that we have so often in the, in the hazy cobweb-type skies, and it feels like you're under a microwave, the heat's very intense, that's not cooling anything, is it? No. So when we even see on some of those days, Jimmy, we see on, on some of the silvery white days where we see the shorter bright trails, which are still sprayed dispersions, not the lingering horizon to horizon type of application, but we're getting higher UV readings on those days than we get on an otherwise clear day, which means they're either having a tremendously negative effect on the protective layers of the atmosphere during that application, or they're actually creating some kind of a lens effect perhaps to build a high pressure zone by building the heat. So we're seeing on, on specific days where geoengineering is actually adding to the heat component. So they actually had a, by accident, a blind study when, when all the aircraft were grounded, right? That's exactly what happened for them. They were able to uh, check and verify uh, th their effects by suddenly not having any action going up in the skies, and they were able to go, hey, this is working. In their tunnel visioned sort of uh, approach to this, yes, but we also have happening at the same time, we have data from, for example, NOAA. When you have Data coming out of NOAA that doesn't match what the climate engineers or the power structure wanted to be, we simply believe there are times when the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing and something leaks out. I'll give two examples of that. One in 2010, NOAA announced that these high-level stratospheres, which in reality are the particulate clouds that we see being sprayed in the upper troposphere, sometimes in the tropopause, were exacerbating global warming, making it worse, trapping more heat than it deflected. Now, it's interesting that after that report came out from NOAA, we had reports from many locations around the globe of the spraying dispersions being done at a lower level, as if they're that seat of the pants. That, that they, they, when they got a, this, this study from NOAA that indicated the higher levels were 
making things far worse. We now see spraying at far lower levels, Jimmy. We see spraying commonly at 20,000 feet so, and, and directly above the cumulus clouds. So again, you have examples where, where part of the power structure control mechanism doesn't realize what they are or aren't supposed to dis disclose. Another example of that, Popular Science announced that they found E. coli bacteria at 33,000 feet in the clouds. And I did a full report on this as well. E. coli was being experimented with, and there are peer-reviewed studies on this, as a biological ice nucleating agent. So popular science went to great length to try to explain how this E. coli might have gotten to that altitude when, you know, the, the dots are there to connect for anybody who chooses to. This is just part of the ongoing experimentation. And again, to sum this up in, in, as to why this issue is so unimaginably important. If the planet's life support systems are damaged beyond any recovery, that's game over. The end. That's right. Uh, Danae just tweeted. She says that yesterday the trails above her, which were several, 12 were straight and about six were doing loops on the inside of those. She wants to know what was going on. Well, they simply seem to be becoming more and more blatant. Now, I was in a EPA meeting in Sacramento that was arranged by a congressional rep, and we pulled the FAA daily GPS flight records for that meeting, and you can't get that without congressional rep approval. And it showed that these flights were making giant loops up and down the state of California. Pretty hard to explain. But the EPA people in Sacramento, there were five officials in this closed-door meeting, it came down to this. They made it clear that they were told what to test for and what not to test for. Combustion materials only is what they look for in particle sizes that are far larger than what's being used by climate engineering. Because people asked Jimmy, if this was really going on, why wouldn't these regulatory agencies disclose this to us? Why wouldn't they show it in their testing? Right. It's their job to pacify the population. People need to understand that. They're there to hide the dangers, not to disclose it. So when we have, at best, air quality testing at PM10 or PM2.5, 10 micron or 2.5 micron, the smaller the particle size, the more dangerous it is. When geoengineering materials, we're talking about particles exponentially smaller. They go virtually under the radar. They're not detected by the air quality equipment, so therefore, we have agencies all over the country pretending the air is cleaner when it's anything but. So, again, people need to look up. They need to do a little research and understand this is nothing short of a fight for life. With um, Whenever I see the response of Washington, whether it's the Senate, Congress, House, whatever, anybody, any rep wants to get up and mention the word chemtrails, right? You watch everybody react, roll their eyes, and just go, okay, here we go, right? And, and then the issue is dropped. And you have been in the faces of uh, California politicians. You've made it your career. Do they actually respond to you at all? Do they ever read the data? Do they ever act concerned ever? Yes, especially if you use the science terms. And when I had uh, an audience with Lieutenant Governor Newsom and his aides in his office presenting data on this issue, and I had a considerable length of time to do that, and the reason I had that time, and there were other people that are, are quite influential that insisted he give me that time, and there's no question they had no rebuttal to the data I presented. It's inarguable. When you present satellite imagery of blanket grid pattern spraying over our storm track in the Pacific, this is in 2014, early 2014, and I made clear to Newsom and his aides that if this continued, California's drought would be epic. And that's exactly what has happened. It couldn't not happen so long as that grid pattern spraying continued. Newsom knows. Other EPA people know. I've been in Barbara Boxer's office. They know. Other congressmen. I've spoken in front of California Energy Commission, CARB. This is simply something that they are all told to avoid. They know how long their leash is. They know what they can talk about and what they can't. And we have a system, Jimmy, full of absolute cowards that refuse to do the right thing, period. Order followers, if you will. If the order followers don't find some courage and stand up, we're in for a very, very dark, immediate future.
When it comes to GMOs and geoengineering <laughs> of our food supply, um, is that working in concert, too, as well with what is uh, being sprayed? Are they designed to work with each other? Is that also an end game for companies like Monsanto? Again, you have the disaster capitalists, but some make the mistake of thinking that is really the core of this issue, and that's not the case. Monsanto is engineering aluminum-resistant seeds, UV-resistant seeds, right? and uh, we have also uh, the, the abiotic stress-resistant as well. And the bottom line is, yes, are they trying to capitalize off the damage being done? Absolutely. Uh, how much do we have those capitalizing off of wars? But again, that doesn't mean the wars are not real. Just because someone is making money off something doesn't mean that that situation is not real. And people need to understand this with the climate because there's people right now who think they're fighting climate engineering that are actually towing the exact narrative that the power structure and the geoengineers want them to tow, that there's nothing wrong with the climate except climate engineering. It's just about making money. It's much, much bigger than that. I'm not saying there's not disaster capitalists making money off this. It's absolutely the case. And in addition to the seeds, you have the uh, derivatives trading. They're, they're literally a gambling casino run by those who orchestrate the weather to make money off the weather disasters, weather derivatives trading. But the deeper issues are much, much bigger. And we're back to the methane, the methane that's filling the atmosphere right now. We're seeing methane counts at 3,000 parts per billion, up 20,000 feet. The planet hasn't been over 700 parts per billion for over a million years. It's covering the planet like a layer of glass right now. It looks like perhaps 50 gigatons of methane may have already released or is in the process of releasing from the East Laptev Sea. That's enough to completely alter our planet to a state that's going to be very different than what it is now, and it appears to be happening. So I, I just want to stress to people, this is a complex issue. Don't try to oversimplify it because you lose credibility. Right, exactly. And uh, again, this is this is my polluted brain looking at the obvious, but I need you to confirm <laughs> what I'm thinking here, which is we've had these crazy cold winters on the East Coast these last few years insane snowstorms, just insanity going down. Meanwhile, we've got this craziness going on on the West Coast, and uh, we have the global warming that is happening. And the first thing that I think is there is no global warming. We've got the longest winters and the deepest snows on record. And now I feel like the lying is starting to affect my vision and my senses on what is really going on. Is, is this part of the mass media trying to deflect the global warming issue by freezing out the East Coast? I know that's conspiratorial, but it seems like that that is exactly what is going on. You're exactly on target. And this is where geoengineering becomes a psychological operation. And it has worked very well, especially for those in Boston, places that had record snows last year. And it's funny how short people's memories are because 2012 – was the warmest year ever recorded in the U.S. And the power structure knows that people's memories are short. And if they can simply cool things down chemically, people forget quickly. In fact, you had records set in 2012 in Dakota. In February of 2012, it hit a temperature of almost 100 degrees, 96 degrees in Dakota in winter. And that broke the former all-time high record by 32 degrees. Imagine breaking the former all-time high by 32 degrees. And people forget quickly. So at the same time, let's go back to this year, this last winter, Jimmy. Christmas Eve of 2015, this last winter, you had temperatures in the U.S. in places well below zero while it was 40 degrees and raining at the North Pole. Right. Repeat that. Christmas Eve, middle of winter, it was 40 degrees and raining at the North Pole. So people need to look at the bigger picture. Just because it's chemically cool outside your window with a toxic chemically nucleated snow doesn't mean that the whole world is cold. People need to look at the broader horizon. Don't believe me. Look at film footage from the front lines like Chasing Ice, Jimmy. I'd like to recommend to your, your listeners. It's a, it's a great film, documentary you can watch online. No politics. Frontline footage. Make your own mind up. Look at frontline data. Don't listen to anybody. Make your own mind up as to what's happening with the ice around the globe. 
When we come back after this break, I want to talk about nucleatic snow and ice and uh, when uh, we, when people out there hear about these snowstorms, not not uh, the concerned citizens, the ones that are oblivious, they just think that it's just snow. And if we're creating snow, oh, it's just snow. It's not that big of a deal. Who cares? Who's it's gonna? You know, who is it going to hurt? And that is simply not the case, is it, Dane? It's not Absolutely. just snow. No, we're talking about a highly toxic endothermic reacting substance that tends to sublimate which means it turns from a solid to a gas like dry ice does not much runoff coming off if the runoff is toxic it does come off and we're talking about a very unnatural and very destructive material to the environment uh, dane what were you like when you were a kid were you dropping the big words <laughs> <laughs> Uh, were you, you my, my background? Uh, were you, you know, one of those kids, though? Were you one of those kids? You were like super smart, very young, and 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 walking around like this. No. Okay. <laughs> I was I, I was I was involved with uh, sports and and other issues, but you know this the environment was always close to my my heart, Jimmy. And when you see it being destroyed in front of your face, you decide to do anything you have to do to learn anything you have to learn to make a difference for the better period. There's no other option for me. Yeah. Thank you so much for rolling that rock uphill. Let's take a quick break right now. Our guest tonight is Dane Wigington. This is fade to black. You can follow us on Twitter at J church radio and Dane's website is geoengineeringwatch.org. It is an amazing read. And after the show tonight, you need to go and hang out more with Dane Wigington right after this short break. Stay with us. Here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRA Radio.com. ¿Qué tal, mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carzanel, tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. Not being able to fall asleep is so frustrating. The tossing, the turning, the adjustment of pillows and blankets. Ugh. Eventually, you just decide to get up and start your day really early. It doesn't have to be this way, though. Power Sleep is an all-natural, non-prescription formula that will help you sleep like a baby. It contains neurotransmitter nutrients that promote the production of serotonin, which is responsible for feelings of well-being. Power Sleep is easy to digest and absorb and is made in a base of active probiotics. Don't miss another night of sleep. Order your Power Sleep at energywave.com or call 800-TURTLE-5. Add Power Vites to your cart while you're browsing. Perfect for Monday mornings. They're a complete multivitamin and mineral formula that will give you the energy you need to get through your day. Nourish your immune system and feel great. Get all the info and place your order at energywave.com. Enter code word SLEEP to get free shipping. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Did you ever turn to your radio for your favorite talk show to find that it's been preempted for this? In the air, a deep right center. Back goes Lewis to the wall, and it's all here! Or this? And I'm ashamed of you and Hillary for voting for it. Do you have a favorite talk radio program that's not available in your city? Just go to TalkStreamLive.com for links to the best streaming talk radio shows. At TalkStream Live, you will find live talk shows 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. All your favorites are here. With such a large selection, you will also discover some new favorites. On the go and still want to listen? With the mobile smartphone, simply type TalkStream Live on your internet browser. Now you can take internet radio with with you. You will also find hundreds of music, news, and sports streams. Best of all, the TalkStream Live directory is free and there's never a login required. Remember TalkStreamLive.com, the fastest route between you and your favorite talk radio show. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is revolution. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution is on radio. Ciao.
Welcome back to Fade to Black. From the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet, I'm your host, Jimmy Church. You can follow us right now on Twitter at Radio. Email, which is flooding in. Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Dane, right before the break, I brought up the uh, nucleatic snow. And it's not, I, I, I need you to expand on this force because it's not just snow. It sticks to everything. It doesn't melt. It changes what's going on on the ground. It kills animals, livestock, and so forth. Um, how dangerous is it and why is it so dangerous? Well, you touched on a lot of those reasons, and you have a very good grasp of what it's doing. It is very adhesive. It's much heavier than a natural snow because they're nucleating moisture at a temperature that should not be conducive to any natural snow. There's much more moisture in a warmer atmosphere, so you have this, this heavy cement-like material that's crushing trees. You have trees with the root systems compromised because of the bioavailable materials that are in the precipitation, so with, between the weak root systems and foliage that gets covered with this adhesive snow, the first time the wind blows, everything falls over, it just pushes the trees right over instead of the snow fluffing off. Now, in regard to livestock, two major incidents, one recent, one in 2013, involving massive amounts of cattle. Some of your listeners may or may not have heard of the 100,000 cattle that died in South Dakota. On October 4th, 2013, you had a snowstorm with snow occurring at temperatures in the 40 degree range. At the same time, it was raining in Chicago at 85 degrees, raining in Kansas City at 90 degrees. How in the world could 100,000 cattle die in South Dakota at 40 degree snowstorms? Because this adhesive material sticks to their hide. It's endothermic reacting, which means it's extremely cold to the touch. So you have a flash burn that occurs and it sticks around their face. When a cow's nostrils clog, they die because they won't breathe through their mouth. So you had 100,000 cattle die. Four days later, back to mud, no snow. Same thing happened in Texas this last year. From 80 degrees to a snowstorm, it killed 30,000 cattle. Had 250,000 alpacas die twice in South America, two of these nucleated snowstorms. This is simply weather warfare and biological warfare, period. And people need to realize this. So these short-term cooldowns, when you have weather whiplash, Jimmy, and everybody knows what that is now if you're paying attention at all, the temperatures that radically whip from 80 degrees to snow back to 80, and that's going to get worse because the planet's warming rapidly. Geoengineering is making it worse. The warmer it gets, the more damage they do, the more they ramp these programs up to hide the damage already done. Bad cycle. Let's go to some email really quick. Could geoengineering be responsible for major storms staying stationary for days at a time, such as the recent one in Houston? Absolutely a direct result of climate engineering. Now, let's think about what they just eclipsed. We're back to the psychological aspect of this. As you correctly stated, in the winter of 2014, 2015, when we had all the record snow in Boston, everybody's attention was on that. Nobody really even remembered the fact that, oh, yeah, 2014 was the warmest year ever recorded on the planet until 2015. Oh, yeah. But we had temperatures in California while it was record snow in Boston. We had 90 degrees in the middle of winter. So as we're back to this snowstorm that just happened, it's winter storm VEXO. The Weather Channel theatrically names these because that adds to the psychological aspect of these storms. Right. So you had snow falling in the 40-degree range in Colorado, while well, you had record temperatures all around that scenario. And what headline did they eclipse by creating winter storm VEXO? They eclipsed the fact that I just mentioned 2014 was the warmest year ever recorded. 2015 shattered that. January 2016 was the warmest month ever recorded by far. February 2016 shattered the January record. And right in the middle of winter storm VEXO, the March data came out. March completely shattered the February data, the, these records are staggeringly high. The science community is absolutely in a panic. Not a word on the Weather Channel or mainstream media because they hyped up this winter storm, even though there was record heat, record shattering heat all around it. Well, absolutely I, engineered. Who, own, the who owns the Weather Channel? Bain Capital and Blackstone. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's the end of that story, right? Who owns Climate Corp. Monsanto. Ro Monsanto. Uh, Reuters owns one, too, as far as I know. Uh, 
Rothschilds, Weather Central. Yeah, yeah. Well, they own Reuters, the Rothschilds, yes. The Reuters, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you have the foxes running the hen house from bottom to top. So who do you go, if, if you're uh, if you're going to watch some, get some weather news, where, did, where does Dane Wigington go for that? I, I look at all sources, and I look at all sources of media as well, because I, I want to see always what the population is being fed. And in fact, it's very interesting, especially on the Weather Channel. Jimmy, you may have seen that one of the Weather Channel modeling experts was supposedly committed suicide in the parking garage of the Weather Channel as his car accelerated out of control into a wall, something like uh, Princess Diana's car did. Did you see that? Yeah, I remember that. I do. So l let's consider the fact we have, for those who think that if this was going on, we'd have everybody talking about it. We have whistleblowers everywhere. That's absolutely false. Let's consider, first, government scientists, no First Amendment protection at all, none. Let's add to that, all National Weather Service and all NOAA employees now have a federal gag order on them, on top of no First Amendment protection. So who does the modeling for National Weather Service and NOAA? Raytheon. Raytheon's up to their neck in climate engineering. So we have, again, Raytheon doing the modeling that trickles all the way down to the Weather Channel. Did we have someone at the Weather Channel that knew what was going on was absolutely wrong and maybe perhaps was going to speak out and maybe he was an example for the rest? I'm just hypothesizing, but his parents were absolutely floored at what happened and tried to state on the record that this was simply not, and I, I know we'd expect the parents to say this, but their testimony was quite compelling that he was not in a place where this should have happened. Uh, so when he was uh, suicided, if you will, or whatever happened to him, the other actors at the Weather Channel, and that's exactly what they are, it's really comical to watch them try to explain away these engineered anomalies day in, day out, trying to explain away why it's snowing at 50 degrees, why there's ice on the ground in the valley and it's 50 degrees and raining way up on the mountain because we have now we have ice storms, Jimmy, between the warm side of the winter storm and the cold side, as if we should have a warm and cold side to a winter storm, 80 degrees on one side of the storm and tornadoes and frozen precipitation on the other. But in between this, we, we now have an ice storm generally because that's the nucleated material hitting the ground and setting up before it, you know, it actually freezes. So you have all these anomalies. The Weather Channel tries to explain away. They're trying, they're trying to cover the tracks for the geoengineers because that's what they're paid to do. I, this may be outside of your box, but maybe not. Uh, this is an email, and please ask Dane if he has any comments on photos or videos of UFOs and craft interaction with chemtrails and the theory put forth by ET human channelers around the world that ET are trying to help minimize the damage from geoengineering. Any comments on that? It, it is out of my arena, and I again, I, I keep an open mind to you know, what may be in the universe. And I, I certainly would feel I'm a bit of a lay student of cosmology. We have 500 million stony planets in the Goldilocks zone in our galaxy alone. It would seem unlikely that we're the only life form. That being said, in regard to the aerosol operations, in regard to the origin of these operations and those behind them, we have nothing happening here that we can't firmly put the handprint of power crazed global elites on firmly. So uh, again, whatever else is happening, I've, I've tried to keep my building blocks on solid, verifiable data so we can build bridges with the climate science community and the environmentalists, which by the way, Jimmy, both those communities in unimaginable denial on this issue. And you can't have a legitimate discussion about the climate without discussing climate engineering first and foremost. The environmental community and the climate science community needs to show some courage. And we know in the meteorological community, conversations with a Fox News meteorologist that said off the record that they were being taken into meetings and told, you don't touch this issue, period. What do you do, Dane? You are up against, you know, the biggest uh, corporate uh, uh, entities in the world, uh, not only uh, uh, with the Monsantos and the Raytheons of the world, but the Exxon Mobiles and, and the fossil fuel industry and, and GMOs and food. That's the biggest lobbying money block there is. And they do everything they can do to discredit you and bring you down. And you face it on a daily basis. How do you deal with it? First of all, the data is solidly in our court, period. I mean, weighted in our favor. 
When people ask, how do you prove this is happening once and for all? We have film footage of these tankers spraying at altitude, turning on and off, nozzles visible, end of the argument, period. So any attempt to discredit for anyone who truly is trying to do an objective investigation doesn't work. Now, as far as the, the latitude to continue sounding the alarm on this, I believe that we are gaining allies behind the curtain, people who are looking at our data and who are perhaps directly or indirectly involved with these programs that are realizing what they were told is wrong, that they're involved with something that will absolutely eliminate any chance for a future for they and their children. And I think we're gaining, again, uh, allies behind the curtain. And when I was contacted some months back by uh, an Air Force general who was looking at that data and realizing what his former uh, employer was involved with. I communicate with him regularly now and a couple other service people. This augments this uh, indication that we are gaining allies behind the curtain of people actually in the service. And those, again, Jimmy, I can't stress enough, that's who we need to reach so that when we reach critical mass and the families of those in the militaries and those participating in these programs know what their family member is participating in, that's when we have a real chance to stop these programs from the inside out. And that's even what our legal efforts, which we can go to whenever you want, that's what our legal efforts are designed to do, to bring this issue to the light of day in credible fashion so that the whole world knows this is going on. Because if, at that moment, the world will be catalyzed and united against what the power structure has done to them. Well, when we look at uh, the those power groups, whether it's the Bilderbergers, the Cabal, Illuminati, whatever, you know, the Rothschilds, banking system, whatever you want to point at, one would say, and I ask myself this, they're poisoning their own planet and they're poisoning themselves and their children, too, as well. They must have uh, they must have some plans for this. The answer is yes and no. Do they have chelation methods to detox their system that aren't available to the rest of us? The indications are yes. And I communicated with a Norwegian researcher that had been to a facility in Germany that you are on a table for a day and a half. Your blood is pulled from the body. It's a very sophisticated system that flushes the heavy metals out. If the global elite had such a treatment once a year, they would exempt themselves from the temporary buildup of these metals. Now, aside from that, even though they might keep their personal health intact indefinitely with the right treatment, if the planet doesn't support life, it's game over for them as well. And this is a point, this is a subject or a question that many people walk from the table. They, they can't bring themselves to believe that the proverbial they, which is the central bankers, people ask who are the they behind this, all roads lead to the central bankers, those who print the money, those are the ones pulling the strings. But people can't bring themselves to believe that the global elite would do this to themselves. But I, but I bring up again and again, how many examples of what they do to themselves do we already have? And Fukushima being a primary one, three reactors, full meltdown, no technology to fix it. If it continues like this, Fukushima may kill us all. And we have 60 more reactors on the boards right now. We have reactors being put back online that in some cases in the Netherlands have 50 to 60,000 known fissures in the reactors, and they're putting them back online. We have the detonation of 2,000 nuclear bombs. We have the buildup of nuclear armaments enough to exterminate humanity 12,000 times over. I could go on and on and on of how many things they have done to themselves. So for those who want to use that argument as a reason to not believe and not investigate geoengineering is going on, your argument doesn't hold water. Could they be also, you know, terraforming is another word that comes into play here. Could they be terraforming for an alternate future that they are planning and we wouldn't know anything about? Well, again, mathematically speaking, we have paleo data to compare with if we stay on this current trajectory. And the most parallel paleo data would be the, the PETM event, the Paleocene Eocene Thermal Maximum, 55 years, million years ago, global mass extinction, methane mass expulsion, a, a climate shift, if you will, because we need to define those terms. We're in free falling right now into what would be more accurately categorized as a climate shift, extremely abrupt climate change. So if we compare with the Petum event, you had about 95% aquatic extinction globally, about 75 to 80% terrestrial extinction. You had about 10 to 20 million year equilibrium periods afterward, 
that long for the earth to recover. So for those who think that the global elite, or if they think this themselves, are going to crawl underground, sterilize the surface of the planet, come out and have everything back to the way it was, not the case. And there is much, much more momentum behind what's happening now, much more than the Petum event, which indicates if we stay on the current trajectory that we're on right now, we're talking about total near-term global extinction. And the, the figures of die-off that we already have, things are dying off around the globe. Anybody who looks can find this out, that we're having fish kills every day, tens of thousands of tons of fish floating up every day because the oceans are like bathwater. It's thawing methane. It's thawing hydrogen sulfide. The oceans are gassing. They're turning into what's called Canfield Ocean, which is a stratified, oxygenless dead zone. And if we continue on this course, we've lost 60% of Earth's wildlife populations in the last 40 years. The rate is accelerating. We're losing two to 300 species of plant, animal, and insect every single day to extinction, 15,000 times the background rate. Do the math. I tell, I ask anybody, do the math if you think we're going to be in this paradigm much longer on this course. Is it something natural, Dane, too, as well, that uh, is something that we won't be able to correct? Uh, you know, is this just another phase of Mother Earth, you know, vomiting and regurgitating and, and resetting? Great question. Another Another uh, trajectory a lot of people like to go on, it's good you ask that question, nothing natural about what's happening right now. And for anybody who wants to try to cling to that argument, how can it be natural to destroy 55% of Earth's trees? We've lost 55%, 3.4 trillion trees dead. The other 45% is dying to poison the oceans, pave the planet, burn 20, 20 million years of stored hydrocarbon in 200 years. What's natural about that? And people argue that, well, the whole solar system is warming. Not true. Not true. I, I challenge anyone to investigate that notion. And don't look at a headline from John Coleman, who started the Weather Channel, <laughs> right. or Lord Moncton, who knows nothing about he, Lord Moncton has a journalism degree. So does, so does John Coleman. These are people who are paid to say what they say. And I've done plenty of exposés on all of them. You can lead all of them right back to oil lobby money. So I'm simply asking people, do the investigation. The planet was cooling until the start of the Industrial Revolution, at which point it started to heat very rapidly. You had a cool down from 1945 because a lot of people look at this, uh, Jimmy, and try to claim this is some sort of proof that it's all natural. Right. There was a cooling period from 1945 to about 1975, and that's because geoengineering had a very profound effect at first. We know they started in 1945, especially over the poles, but as they filled the atmosphere with particulates and the negative effects began to kick in and, and outweigh the reflective aspects of those materials, and you had the further buildup of greenhouse gases overwhelming that cooling effect, it's a tug of war in the atmosphere, and the buildup of greenhouse gases, especially methane, is radically overwhelming the aerosol spraying, which is, again, overall making every aspect of the equation more negative. But you can trace all these events, even that 30-year cooling period was a result of geoengineering as well. Nothing natural about that. So, again, those that try to pretend this is somehow natural, I would give this argument, Jimmy. It's like running someone over in a crosswalk with a semi and saying people die, it's natural. What is the goo that shows up on cars after rain? Well, we have a number of things showing up. In fact, have you seen, Jimmy, some of the foam that's showing up? Uh, that, the, yeah, that was my next question, Dane. So let's stay with the goo first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm jumping the gun on you. Yeah. At, at, at any given point, it's really impossible for us to know what's being sprayed, what's being experimented with. Some of that gel gelatinous-type material that showed up in Washington yes. absolutely appeared to be a biological test, and there's quite a bit of data to corroborate that. So in the process of them trying to determine how to get various materials, in some cases pathogens, from the clouds to the ground, uh, who knows what type of carrier they may experiment with. And, and for those who don't think they're doing this, again, I got an audio from a Pacifica radio announcer friend of mine who taped one of the, probably the second most recognized geoengineer on the planet, Ken Caldera. And that audio is posted at geoengineeringwatch.org because it never was aired before that. Ken Caldera from Stanford University, who formerly worked for, for Lawrence Livermore, and he stated on, the, on, on this audio that what he did at Lawrence Livermore was 
sit around trying to decide with other academicians how to carry pathogens sprayed from aircraft and get those pathogens, pathogens intact from the cloud to the ground to infect the populations below. This, these are his words. Right. So for those who don't think this is going on, you're simply not looking at reality. Now, what about this foam? The foam isn't isolated. It's, it's on multiple continents, and it certainly looks similar as well. What is going on there? It appears that some of the spray ac applications use surfactants, and that's a material that can cause that type of condition. Surfactants are using detergents as well. So in the course of their attempt to manipulate atmospheric moisture, surfactants appear to be a part of that mix in certain occasions. And so we see those, that foam appearing uh, at, at various, um, in various scenarios. Now, along, to give another example of that, the chemical ice nucleation that we see and had just discussed earlier, and we see the repercussions of that as well with the 75-pound ice boulders. Jimmy, you may have seen those. In Michigan, Lake Michigan? Not just Lake Michigan. They're showing up on the seas of the Baltic. Oh, yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. That's showing right. Showing up in a lot of places. And they, and they form in waters that are far above freezing. How can that happen? Because you have all this material falling out, whether they're chemically ice nucleating or they're trying to migrate the moisture or they're biological experimenting, and all of it starts to mix together. Who knows what you come out with? But on the on the ice nucleation materials, again, those the ice boulders are an absolute dead giveaway. And we have all these scenarios that we have, again, the paid actors at places like the Weather Channel trying their best to explain away as being natural. Uh, I frankly don't know how these people look themselves in the mirror. I, I can't remember uh, when I first started to see the ice balls and the pictures, which are just mind blowing to look at that stuff. I can't think of at any point in history going back a thousand years. I've never heard of any reports of that phenomena ever uh, in history. This is certainly new and it has to be man made. Well, it is, it is. And again, when people ask, why would they want to manipulate the weather? I, I don't know why that question would even deserve an answer. Why, why would those who crave power not want to control a weapon like this that, again, allow, allows them to win a war without the opposing side even knowing they were at war, without firing a shot? So, And now, this is important that Americans understand. If Americans think that their government is there for the benefit of the American people, you need to wake up. You absolutely need to wake up, and our military brothers and sisters need to wake up as well. They're being used against their own population. So in the case of the California drought, again, cut and dry. This is a result of climate engineering, period. And although we could look at that scenario, Jimmy, and say, well, maybe, maybe they're trying to do something benevolent, and maybe California just becomes a climate sacrifice zone. But that's not the case either, because we know when we see moisture, monsoonal moisture flowing in the summer when it's most needed, this is the planet's cooling mechanism. When you have extreme temperatures for a certain period of time, you generally will get monsoonal moisture. And we see them aggressively eliminating that moisture. We can, we can see the aircraft above the forming convective cells, the thunderheads, and we can see them dissipating those cells, making sure that nothing falls. So uh, this is nothing short of weather warfare. And if again, for the American population, you need to understand you're not – just expendable to those in power, you're an increasing liability to them. What are the basic compounds in the aerosols? I, I, there's obviously different types of geoengineering that's being sprayed in these aerosols, but what are the basic compounds and what, what do we need to be most alarmed about? Well, again, let's start with aluminum and let's relate that to the, the bee die off because We've communicated to bee people around the country that there was a bigger issue. That issue was climate engineering, heavy metals. Uh, they refuse to discuss it. They're, they're academicians that have been well-programmed. They won't look at anything outside of their box. We now have peer-reviewed study to prove the bees are dying from aluminum exposure. And your listeners can all look this up. Just search bees aluminum. Don't believe me. So let's start with that metal again, which we know to be related to Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, ADD. We have Everything we would expect with this exposure going off the scale, absolutely off the scale. We have MIT telling us again, within nine years, every other child will have autism. 
Would you think that that would be a headline somewhere, Jimmy? Yeah. Every other child? Yeah, we've been talking city. about it uh, for the last uh, three weeks on the show. Certainly the movie Vaxxed, I'm sure you've heard about it, uh, addresses this issue too as well. Uh, that was just released. And you should check that out, Dane. It's uh, an amazing documentary. But, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Okay, so it's aluminum. What's uh, what's uh, number two? Barium. Barium. Manganese. Lead. Copper. And, on the, and let me weave this into Vax because it's a movie that I'm trying to get aired in Northern California. And I, Andrew uh, Wakefield is an exceptional human being. I've had the, the honor of conversing with him twice at, at Cal Jam and... We're trying to get this in Northern California, so let's weave these issues together. We have synergistic toxicity between the mercury in vaccines and the aluminum that's being sprayed from the sky. And we have peer-reviewed study in the case of those two metals. When those two metals are combined, overall toxicity can increase as much as 10,000%. That's 100 times worse. So the magnitude of all that we're being exposed to is immense beyond people's comprehension. Uh, that's why we, we need to abruptly change course, starting with the climate engineering. We can avoid the vaccinations, and they need to be disclosed. I mean, the, the film is exceptional, and it needs to be aired everywhere, I agree. But we can't hold our breath, and every breath we take is laden with these materials that are being sprayed from the sky. And it doesn't matter if people believe it or not, Jimmy. We have the lab test to prove it, 70 from Northern California alone. These materials are raining down on our air column in unimaginable quantities, so we, we simply have to deal with this. Do you take... Uh, do you take... Uh, IR readings every day, and are you uh, and, and from around the country? And how much help do you have with this? Uh, not much. You know, we we take um, UV readings periodically, but I mean between between trying to keep the website going, trying to get dissemination out on the radio, trying to deal with our lawsuits, which we can get to whenever you choose. Yeah, we'll uh, do that right after the break. Yeah, not not much time left. Not much at all. Okay, uh, yeah, in the movie Vax, well, you, you just said you're in touch with Andy, but if you need my help there to uh, to do anything to facilitate that, uh, you know, I'm here for you. We had a Dell Big Tree on the show last week, and we went to a special press screening over the weekend, and uh, absolutely frightening film. Frightening, 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 and that's all I need to say. Just absolutely disturbing. On every I level. can't use your help. I would, and I'll, I'll reach you afterward. Yes, yeah, I do yeah. need that because we want to air it in Northern California theater. We just need a little more help to, to figure that out. Yeah, we'll make it happen for you. All right, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, Dane, there's one basic question that I have to ask. If we are stopping the rain right from falling somewhere, that moisture is there. It's got to come down somewhere else. And that's a key question. And let's talk about that next. And we'll talk about the legal issues and everything else. Our guest tonight, Dane Wigington, geoengineeringwatch.org. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow us on Twitter at J Church Radio. More with Dane right after this short break. Stay with us. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Metal Guard, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. KGRA Radio. Intelligent Talk. If your home has hard water and it's leaving white spots, then it's likely that Limescale is clogging your pipes. Limescale can cost hundreds of dollars a year in wasted energy and early appliance breakdown. Hydro care systems available at Wave Home Solutions prevent and remove Limescale with just a simple filter change every three years. There are no salts, chemicals, or magnetic coils. Satisfaction guaranteed. For more information, just go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. If you're a talk radio fan, accessradio.net lets you listen to the best talk shows anytime and from anywhere. Works on your mobile or landline phone, and there's no cost if you have unlimited minutes. No need to use your data. Find your favorite talk show listen lines and discover new ones. Now you can listen on your schedule. Go to accessradio.net. That's accessradio.net. Save your favorite listen lines today. 
Hi, I'm Richard Dolan. When I'm not hosting my radio program, The Richard Dolan Show on KGRA, or writing new books on UFOs, I run a publishing company. I'm proud to say that Richard Dolan Press has published some of the most fascinating books available on UFOs and related subjects. They include Dr. Bruce Maccabee's classic analysis of the UFO cover-up, David Marler's breakthrough book on triangular UFOs, Dr. Richard Souter's unique work on underground bases, and other classics by Grant Cameron, Chase Kletsky, and Dr. Bob Wood. Not to mention intriguing works by Eve Lorgan and Laurie McDonald that deal with truly bizarre phenomena. I'm proud to publish such high quality and original works, and there are several amazing books about to be released over the next few months. Go to richarddolanpress.com to learn more. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. Welcome back to Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Dane Wigington, website geoengineeringwatch.org you can just go to jimmychurchradio.com click on dane's name take you straight there and good luck getting off of that website in less than uh you know two days because you're going to be stuck there forever and uh, i gotta admit dane i go to uh your site on those days when i i'm i'm material starved and i just wait a minute i gotta go to dane and and i go and i steal i hope you don't mind that's what it's for. That's exactly right. Okay, now this is this is the question. There's only so much water that a sponge can hold. I'm referring to the clouds. And if they stop, and they do, they stop the rain in certain areas, that water still has to fall somewhere else, right? It does, but depending on how many condensation nuclei there is in the sky, and again, examples we have of this, Jimmy, Mount Pinatubo blew in 1992, and that not-so-significant eruption caused 1992 to be the lowest global rainfall year ever recorded by 50% because of the particulates it put in the atmosphere. Too many particulates prevents the water droplets from combining and getting heavy enough to fall as rain. So right. they can migrate a tremendous amount of moisture, and this is what they've been doing to California over and over and over, even when we get moisture coming across us. This is back to what I stated in the beginning of the show, that we are not getting the orographic enhancement, the exponential increase in rain that we should get over the mountains because the atmosphere is full of condensation nuclei. And when these storms come in, they'll see the AR, the atmospheric river, and they steal that moisture and they blow it out, broadcast it out. And this is done, again, if you have electrically conductive particulates exposed to the right radio frequencies that repel each other in every direction. That helps to scatter that moisture, scatter that engineered cloud cover, solar radiation management. And it's not uncommon for us to see nearly half, when, when there's a storm coming in, we can see nearly half of the continental U.S. covered in largely rainless cloud canopy before we even get the first drops in, in California. And instead of squalls coming in with wind and, and heavy rain, it's a very measured rain, and it's if your listeners can watch the puddles around them, if you see a really rapid-fire drizzle, all uniform raindrop size, you can bet that that has geoengineering particulates in it. If you have litmus paper, you can test such a puddle. If it's been raining like that for a while, you can test that. And if you have a, a rainwater pH of 
anything above 5.6, which is a pretty standard, rain is acidic because of the carbon in the atmosphere, we get results of 6.6, 6, 6, 6 8, extremely alkaline rain. And that's and for your listeners that don't know, one point on the pH scale is the same as the Richter scale. It's a magnitude of 10. So if you go from 5.6 to 6.6, 6, you just went 10 times toward alkaline. So again, they're affecting absolutely everything. They can migrate this moisture. And again, back to the whole concept of any form of weather modification, anything you do to affect the climate system has to have an overall negative effect. If you seed for rain one place, even if we were looking at just the small prop-driven planes that, by the way, Jimmy, they're using that for a distraction. Have you seen some of the, the headlines about the new the weather modification programs in California? Yes, and it's going on right behind uh, our studio here in Burbank. Total distraction. Red herring, that's all it's meant to do is distract people from the overlying climate engineering programs. But even in theory, if we look at those programs, how hard is it to figure out if they did work and caused rain to fall one place? It obviously didn't get to wherever it was going. Somebody got hurt, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so again, any type of weather modifications, weather warfare, and now what we're talking about is, is simply programs of omnicide, total planetary destruction, nothing less. And if we don't expose them and stop them, again, so the planet can respond on its own to the damage done, mathematically speaking, we have no chance. What do, uh, with, um, is it possible, in, in theory, to not have any rain anywhere in the world? I mean, have all of the moisture held up in the clouds? Yes. Really? Let's look at Venus. Yeah, go, yeah. there you go. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I didn't let's even think about Venus, that. Where the could, oceans are now in the atmosphere. So let's could, compare, could we, Yeah, could we turn into a Venus? Uh, is, that, yeah. is that part of the end game? Uh, I, I see no evidence to indicate that that's the intent at all. We simply have a cancer running the planet. And what does a cancer do? It, it tries to expand and proliferate at any cost, and it eventually kills the host. And that's exactly what we're talking about here, a, a heartless, mindless, soulless cancer that everybody's just doing their job with, with psychopathic people at the top and order followers below. So we're on track right now, Jimmy, for what's scientifically termed Venus syndrome. Any of your listeners can look that up, and they'll find out exactly what I'm talking about. So right. people assume that... Venus is 900 degrees on the surface because of its proximity to the sun, and that's not the case. All things being equal, Venus would be about 20 to 25 degrees warmer than Earth, but it underwent a runaway greenhouse effect. The moisture is now in the atmosphere. Atmosphere is 100 times more dense than Earth. Heat comes in, doesn't get out, therefore it's 900 degrees on the surface, and we are on track for Venus syndrome right now. And by the way, Jimmy, you've probably seen all the, the Paris conference protocol and so forth, all claiming to want to keep the planet under 1.5 degrees C of warming. Absolutely. So available temperature record keeping right now indicates that we are likely past three and a half C right now. We are likely past the baseline temperature at which humans have not existed on this planet past three and a half C. And that's we, we say that because we are monitoring temperatures in many locations, and what we're seeing is about a four to five degree under reporting of the high temperature, not over reporting as many people would like to believe, but under reporting. Now, you compare that with the fact that they're using a baseline of the last 30 years of record keeping in many cases, which is already much warmer than normal, and you're inching that scale unimaginably high, especially when you add the underreporting on top. So we're truly uncharted territory, Jimmy. Well, I, do, do you want to take some phone calls? Absolutely. I've, I've got calls coming in. Let's just uh, let's grab a couple really quick. Hi, you're live. I'm Fade to Black. I'm live? Yeah, you're live right now. Okay, I, I, I'm going to introduce a, an idea of Planet X. Planet X is on its way. The government is... is um, uh, am I live really right now? Yeah, you're live right now. And uh, um, uh, 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 did you have a question for Dane? I've got a question for Dane. What do you think the correlation between Planet X, Marshall Masters, I've heard Planet, uh, Dane Wigington on Planet X before, or Marshall Masters' website. And um, I think this whole chemtrail thing is correlated between uh, – 
population control taking us out before this thing comes so they don't have to deal with us? My question is, um, what does he think about that? There you go. And, uh, Thank you so uh, much for the done. call. Yeah, you got it. Thank you for the call. Dane, Planet X. First of all, I, I like Marshall Masters. He's a he's an exceptional uh, human being, I believe. And in regard to, again, trying to put this into one box, now, I think we should all find it astounding that it took so long for official sources to admit there was another exoplanet orbiting the sun, and that's that's significant. But if we trace the origin of these programs back, if we correlate them with known weather warfare applications, historically proven applications, Project Popeye in Vietnam, Project Storm Fury, very long historical record here of these weather manipulating mechanisms being used for warfare purposes and the damage that we know comes from that. So even though we have a unique situation with the, the Planet X scenario, I would argue that we have a much more direct Occam's razor cause and effect and known application for climate engineering that's, again, weather warfare. And is eugenics a factor? Is it a part of this equation? It's hard to argue that it's not when, one, we have the global elite like Rockefeller stating on the record 95% of the population needs to go. And we know that they know how toxic this is. We have studies from the Air Force from the 90s, for example, uh, looking at how incredibly lethal these nanoparticulates are, and they're still spraying them. So, again, many, many layers to the onion, but I would argue that um, the whatever else might be going on cosmologically, and I'm not denying that, we have very direct cause and effect happening here with very visible motives for the power structure. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Yes, hello, uh, Jimmy? Yes, you're live. Hi, th uh, this is Rick calling, and uh, hello, Dane. Hello, Rick. Yes, uh, Jimmy, by the way, I'm calling ju from just down the road from you. I'm in Valley Village, just up from Ventura Boulevard. Oh, there you go, right down the street. Yeah, and I will. Uh, uh, and first off, Dane, I want to thank you so much for the the research you've done. It has broadened my education, and I only hope that billions and billions of more people get what's going on. It's a team effort. It, it, yeah, yeah, it truly. And I was thinking, you know, let's say if just a uh, hundred million people in this country, or fifty million, printed up your your, your flyer and became, uh, you know, conversant with what's going on and passed those flyers out. You know, it, it, who knows? It might even make a difference. That's our best way forward. Thanks for bringing that up. Yes. Uh, and I want to say to the audience, too, I have talked to people. And, like, for instance, I recently talked to people about the UVB uh, at 55 percent. And when people listen, it gives you a lot of energy, believe me, to talk to the next person. And, you know, a lot of people will poo-poo it and just blow you off. But the ones who do listen, it really adds a lot of energy to the whole effort. Um, and I, I would like to say, too, you know, it's, it, it, this is like the Twilight Zone. It's April 20, you know, 19th here in the San Fernando Valley, 90 degrees. The UVB is just piercing. There are no birds. There are no bees. And someone tells me it's a beautiful spring day. Yeah, I know. And and Rick, do you remember what I was talking about earlier in the show last month when it was 85 degrees and the next day it was like 30 degrees overnight and 50 degrees the next day? Do you remember that? Yes, I remember it very well. Yeah, it was, uh, it crazy. was an odd cooling, too. It was a cooling that did not feel natural. No, it felt uh, like uh, I was telling Dane, it felt like I put my face in my freezer when I opened it. It was like a, a weird cold. Cold. Yeah, ex exactly. And uh, on the health front, I just want to say, and again to the audience, since I'm kind of preaching to the choir with both of you, um, th there's something drastically wrong going on. Uh, we now have uh, the cases of teenage, not just autism, but Alzheimer's. And, uh, Dane, you have pointed out uh, this is all sold as normal. Well, that's just life. That's just the way it goes. This is not normal. Yeah, yeah. And when somebody says it's all in your head, that's when I stop listening. Hey, Rick. Well, I, yes. <laughs> and I told somebody about the UVB, and they said, well, that's because you're getting older. And I said, no, that's because it's at 55%. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Rick, thank you for the phone call. First time call. Okay, and, and Dane, uh, I'll do what I can to uh, spread the word. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Rick. You betcha. Bye. Uh, Let's uh, let's just uh, keep this going, Dane. Uh, hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hey, Jimmy, it's Tammy. Um, question, real quick, is, you know, I ship cats. I, I'm a cat breeder, 
nowadays, since they started doing chemtrails more and more often, even from here to California, the animals are getting sick in the planes, not just my cats, but other cats, dogs, you name it, whatever we're shipping. Could that have something to do with the chemtrails up there? Something I worry about because there's no antibiotics curing it. Oh, there you go. Dane? You know, I don't know how to... Uh, the the answer you know the effect on on all livestock certainly there is an effect i um the same as with us and i'm I'm part of that there was a little breakup in the air on my end so i apologize on that on that question oh she was asking about she ships cats she's a breeder thank you for the call tammy Oh, on the shipping on the shipping in the air yeah 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 aerotoxic syndrome now i got it I, i just had a little breakup aerotoxic syndrome uh, there's pilots suing for the same thing. So obviously when you're flying through greater concentrations of these materials, it's got to have a larger effect. And you have a lot of radiation floating around upstairs now as well, thanks to Fukushima. But um, there's major lawsuits going on with aerotoxic syndrome because pilots and flight personnel are absolutely getting sick because they're in thicker concentrations. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hello, Jimmy. Hi, Dane. Uh, You have a very nice website. Um, I want to ask you two things. Uh, Number one, and you don't have to go too long into it, but but I've been reading that some of these chemtrails are now being made invisible. They did something to them because there's too much attention. And part of that question would be uh, the pilots that fly them. uh, I mean, are they being lied to or they just think it's funny or are they uh, being paid extra? And that's the first question. The second question is, could you go more into, is it just weather control or some of the, I don't know if it's paranoia or theories that I hear about these chemicals so that they would go inside our bodies, into our bloodstreams, um, you know, so that we could react more to uh, electromagnetic pulse or other things. I mean, maybe other theories about why they're doing this that you've come across because you you're reliable. You seem like a person that people would listen to. Thank you for the call, Dino. Two great questions, Dane. Let me back into let me back into that first. As far as the materials entering our bloodstream, absolutely the case. It can't not be. So as we're inhaling these materials, it's making us all uh, more or less uh, walking antennas, if you will, and we have internationally recognized climate science scientists like Dr. Russell Blaylock stating this on the record. Jimmy, you still have me on? Yep. Okay. I I had a little blip. I don't know what I'm having some very strange uh, reactions on my computer tonight. I'm not sure why. No, you're solid. You're solid, Dane. Just go. So as we're more electrically conductive and we're exposed to stronger and stronger radio frequency, does that affect us more? Absolutely. Does that give Uh, such a frequency, the ability to disrupt our natural systems, uh, absolutely the case. As far as the invisible trails, if you will, a particulate in the atmosphere will be visible. And the source of that data was still questionable as to uh, the, the notion that they would try to make something, quote, invisible. You can't. It's a particulate. Is there an effort to be more covert in the spring? Absolutely. When we see them turning on and off, and we see this frequently, as they're moving over existing built-up canopy, they will dump quite heavily, and sometimes when they come out into open airspace, they will shut off, and we see this frequently. It's not, there are no absolutes in this equation. Again, no absolutes. And, and back to the really the third part of your question, what's this for? Again, we tried to make clear, and I always try to drive this point home, many, many agendas being carried out at once and we really need to avoid trying to put it in one box or another but absolutely weather warfare climate related population uh, manipulation to control you control food supplies you control the population weather trading derivatives all the above hi you're live on fade to black yeah jim dave wiles uh you have one here we use aluminum in drinking water how much more effect would that have on the thing uh-huh. Great. Good. That, that's a great question. And thank you. What's your name? Dave. Yeah, and thank you. We also have polymers that we had to, which do the cryotic electronic, which causes the molecules of the water to contract to make a uh, flock. And that's in common into water treatment. I did it for one year. 
Yeah, and yeah. also it's where the man was talking about grounding. There was a story about a guy named Tommy Rosso, R-O-S-A, in his book where he had a near-death experience with self about we need to get out and go ground ourselves on the earth, walk barefoot in the ground for a half hour a day, three times a week. We'll remove some magnetic charge out of our body. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Uh, Dave, thank you for the phone call. I was actually going to get to that. Dane, what about the aluminum falling back to Earth, getting into our water supply? Obviously, that's got to have an effect, and what do we do about that? It is happening. We have agencies trying to cover that up, and that's one of the main premises of our upcoming legal action to prove that agencies are intentionally hiding a known contamination from the public. I've been in a closed door meeting in Northern California, reading environmental waste and shown the spikes in aluminum in the Sacramento River, the drinking water for California. They have not disclosed this data. We intend to make them disclose this data. Uh, I've had communication from state biologists with the California Delta Smelt research team. Delta Smelt, huge environmental issue. I have the emails in my possession from this state researcher admitting that they are finding aluminum adhered to the gills of the smelt aluminum nanoparticulates, by the way, this is showing up absolutely everywhere in the environment. So uh, bottom line is, yes, it's absolutely in our water. It's in our food. We have no, there's no true organic anything at this point, Jimmy, because we know all plant life is uptaking this bioavailable material. So uh, it's completely saturated in the environment, period. What, what, what do we have to do? Just filter everything in our homes? I mean, does that have, can you filter out aluminum? Not in this particle size. Uh, there are, are few mechanisms that can uh, address this issue. We're talking about almost a soluble aluminum. So, you know, you can distill your water. That would be the best effort. But then you're taking out all the good minerals also, with the, which has negative effects. So, again, we're back to the, the basic premise that this issue must be a priority issue. It's contaminating virtually everything, irreparably damaging the planet in too many ways for us to go into here. So this is a fight for life. And that's why... That's why I'm focused on this issue. I certainly never wanted this job. As I've stated many times, I'm not an activist. I'm not politically oriented. I never intended to do this. Hey, what, you know, what's it going to take? Everybody start peeing silver, right? Before you start to say that there's something going on here. And that's usually the way it goes. You know, it goes too far. And then people start to get too uh, affected personally. Then they start to react. But until then, everybody wants to keep their heads in the sand, don't they? They do. And again, even even an issue as dire as Fukushima, which we, we, none of us can argue, it's it's a true cataclysm. But even with an issue like that, if every breath we take is laden with these materials, Jimmy, and we're all truly real, realistically, we're becoming dumber by the day. We're firing on less neurons every single day because we're absorbing these materials. They're bioavailable. If if this is the case with every breath we take, is that not our priority? Exactly. It must not be our priority. It, it must be. We, we can't face any other challenge if, if we can't think clearly and we don't have our full cognitive function. Uh, th that's the end of the road. We can't face any other challenges. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hi, Jimmy. This is Bev. Hey, Bev. What do you have for Dane? Well, actually, it's a couple questions in one. Okay, now, do, do the chemtrails called, excuse me, caused most of the acid rain, and, you know, how does that, I mean, how, how bad does it affect our crops? Well, I, you know what, Bev, I was, at, and thank you for the phone call, and I think that's a very important question. Dane, I was going to get to that earlier. When acid rain first surfaced back in the mid 80s, and we all remember that fear porn, it was real, but it certainly came out of nowhere. Was acid rain a direct effect from uh, spraying in aerosols? Not with the materials that we now see in these mixes. This actually makes the rain more alkaline, not acidic. So the carbon buildup in the atmosphere can't be underestimated. And again, n none of us like Al Gore. Al Gore is not an honorable individual. He played exactly the part the power structure wanted him to play to, to be such an incredible hypocrite that everyone would hate him and disagree with anything he said. But in fact, we're putting 100 million tons of CO2 in the atmosphere every day, and that's what makes the rain acidic. Aluminum oxide 
pushes the rain back toward alkaline. So you have the, these opposing factors. As far as the effect on crops, which was brought up, we have peer-reviewed study in the case of aluminum and its effect on root systems, and it causes organisms to stop nutrient uptake so they die a slow, protracted death or don't grow at all. And we're seeing this happen. It virtually sterilizes soils. And also, the fungal element, Jimmy, when you take antibiotics, you know, I'm sure, that that kills all the beneficial organisms in your body, and fungus tends to proliferate radically. Same thing's happening in the environment. So these bioavailable toxic metals are killing the beneficial microbes. Fungus is taking over everywhere. It's killing trees. It's killing everything else, killing the root systems on trees. So of the species extinction rate that I mentioned earlier, and this is including even marine mammals, for example, that are also dying of fungal infections, whales, dolphins, 70 to 80 percent of that species extinction rate I mentioned, which is, again, 15,000 times the background rate. That's a million and a half percent of normal. 70 to 80 percent is fungally related, and that fungal explosion is most directly related to climate engineering and the various negative effects from these toxic materials. Uh, Dane, we're going to be headed towards a break, and uh, uh, can I get you to hang on for about 10 minutes of overtime? Absolutely. Okay, because I do want to get to the legal efforts, and I want to talk about some other uh, uh, crazy conspiracy theories that are going on out there that you can actually address really quickly. Um, I'll stop taking phone calls, and, and we're going to uh, close this out properly and get to it, and let's do that. And um, one of the, uh, as I start to roll the commercial here, one of, and I want you to think about this during the break, one of the crazy conspiracy theories out there, and I listen to them all, is that some of the spraying is to mark population so you can read them and look at the ebb and flow of population movement on the ground via satellites. I want you to think about that answer, and I'll hit you on the backside. This is Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Dane Wigington. His website, geoengineeringwatch.org. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, and this is Fade to Black. I'll be right back. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your girl Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy, Jimmy Church, on jimmychurchradio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. Angioprim can clean blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is liquid oral chelation. It's not new science. 50 years of research has gone into chelation and now there's Angioprim. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. The first thing Angioprim users say is they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on now at angioprim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better and doing more. Lots more. Talk to a trained Angioprim consultant or go to angioprim.com for help. Call Angioprim toll free at 877-882-7221. That's Angioprim at 877-882-7221. Get the facts about Angioprim. Begin living the life you want, doing the things you used to do again with Angioprim. What's up, Fade or Nots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full-range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this. It's amazing. It's just $129, and use the promo code JCRTWS, and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back, Lee Tappy. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way.
this way. KGRARadio.com. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Welcome back to Faded Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow us on Twitter at JChurchRadio. Twitter, I have not seen like this in a long time. And it seems like I say that every single night. But it is truly out of control. Three years in the making, Dane Wigington joins us tonight. And Dane, before the break, I brought up, you know, one of the crazy things that is as as that has been talked about is that it's a... Uh, marking, you know, marking population so they could see the ebb and flow of, of population centers and, and control and, and look at the directions of things. Uh, what, how do you address something like that? And is that too far out there? Well, I think in an equation that this that's this far off the rails, I don't know that we could count anything as being too far out there. But in the case of, for example, people that see the X's and so forth put it over certain locations, we see the same patterns in the middle of the Arctic, in the Antarctic, we see this on satellite imagery. So it appears that some of these very visible patterns or markings may in fact be a an easier way for them to monitor the flow of an air mass. And sometimes we see the canopies built up over urban areas. We do see this at times, but we can't truly decipher what the overall agenda would be there. And it may in fact be to lower the daytime high so that they can get a lower reading and further mask the fact that the planet's in total meltdown because geoengineering can lower daytime highs under the right circumstances with enough materials applied. But of course you're trapping more heat than you deflect and all the negative effects we already went over. So again, lots of aspects that we can't fully know, Jimmy, but we know enough to know that this is a fight for life. We've identified scientifically, mathematically enough to know that we have to deal with this again or nothing else will matter. Let's talk about your uh, legal situations. What is going on? The lawsuit in Canada has been filed. There's already been a motion by the government to dismiss, but it doesn't look like that motion is going to go far. It's a solid case. I had a long conference call with our attorney team tonight as we do very frequently now. And there's the filing in the U.S. starts with what's called a 60-day notice, which gives all the potential defendants the heads up that they may be caught in a lawsuit. And the 60-day notice is very broad. So it involves Department of Defense, Department of Energy, Federal EPA. There's a long list. It's a very impressive document that's being worked on. The actual filing of the suit we will pick the weakest link in the chain, if that makes sense. And, and this is what we can prove conclusively, that these agencies are hiding a very, very lethal contamination from the population. And once we prove that, at that point, the public, we would hope, if they're still halfway awake and reasonable, will realize the gravity of this situation and we can bring the rest to the surface. Are you doing that in federal court or state court? That would be a federal filing, but it would... It would still, I, I'm, I'm a little cautious to, to put all our cards on the table. It would still take place where we feel the environmental sentiment is the strongest. So even though it's in a federal jurisdiction, uh, we're being very strategic about where that filing would take place so that we can have the most support from that state, if you will. And I think you can guess where that state is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what... What do you when you do something like that? Are you finding a very specific law? Because I mean, you have to fall back on precedence, but there isn't much precedence to fall back on. And so, how do you choose a legal direction to go in? Uh, there is precedence, actually, because again, what we're, what we're proving is that there's a lethal heavy metal contamination that the agencies are not disclosing, and there's a, a long list of environmental provisions that mandate that these contaminations be exposed. So we're standing on very solid legal ground and our environmental, the head environmental attorney does know what he's doing. And um, we're simply compiling a list of plaintiffs right now that's quite extensive. And among those plaintiffs are former government scientists. So 
uh, this will will not be in anything that's uh, really defendable from the defendant side of the equation. We just simply need to get the filing done. We're close. They're trying to make it as watertight as they can. And once that filing occurs, which we hope will be in the next in the next two to three weeks. Man, two that's weeks. that's out of control, man. Uh, that's intimidating. And I, I don't even know what to say to that. That is, uh, whoo, you know, you deserve a medal. And uh, now uh, what about the it's, next? What about the big what about the big game and taking this straight to the United Nations? Is that even in the realm of possibilities? I would argue at the moment we reach critical mass, and this is where, again, I don't want to, I, I don't want to take undue credit. It's a team effort. You, the attorneys, your callers that are helping us to sound the alarm, it's all of us working together that matters. We're all spokes in this wheel. All of us needed to make it roll. And I don't want, what I don't want is any listeners to sit the bench thinking that the wheel's rolling by itself now. They don't need to do anything. That's not the case. Critical mass is the goal here. We must reach critical mass, and that's the primary objective of the legal filing. So everyone is needed to sh distribute credible data. And that's, by the way, for your listeners, that's the easiest way to wake others up. Don't point at the sky and rant. Pass on credible data. You can download our color glossy flyers from geoengineeringwatch.org for free. Any print shop can print them for you. Have something credible with you to pass out. You'll do a much more uh, effective uh, service to those around you by doing that and waking them up. So, again, uh, it, it's all of us working together. Could it go to the U.N.? Yes. We, we would fully expect that the moment we reach critical mass and this issue can no longer be hidden, I would ask, would we not then see a shockwave around the globe when every single human being knows they've been irreparably damaged, their children irreparably damaged, their crops, their waters, their air, everything irreparably damaged? Will we not have a paradigm shift at that point? I, I have found, uh, Dane, and I, I want to of actually follow up on what you just said, but w the one thing that I remember growing up that is missing today are two things, bees and butterflies. I don't see either. And I know you know what I'm talking about. When you and I were running around in the 60s as kids, we were capturing bees. You remember that? You go out and <laughs> you would have a jar full of bees. You can't find bees today to go out there and, and collect as a kid. They don't exist. And, and you remember the floods of monarch butter. You remember those, those, that period of the year where you would go outside and it was, it was like magic going on. Those days seem like they're so far gone. Can we get them back? It, this is a difficult question to answer, not because I don't know the answer mathematically, but people people want to hear that if we do A, B, and C, the reset button will be hit and we'll go back to where we were. And I, I'm sorry to say that that's not the case. We're through the guardrail. The planet we've known is done. But does that mean we can't have a planet that still supports life? No, it does not mean that. We're in uncharted territory. And again, we all know how tenacious life is. If it's given any chance at all, Example, I often give, Jimmy, in the middle of the concrete jungle, any crack in that asphalt, what do you see? A plant growing through it. So we, we must stop the climate engineering so the planet can respond on its own. Then we're going to have a lot of other challenges to face after that. To put the lack of insects in mathematical context, in Northern California, Shasta, Siskiyou counties, the aquatic and terrestrial insect life populations have crashed 90 to 95% as measured by Forest Service biologists in the last 10 years, a virtual crash of the insects. If the insects can't make it, how long will we be here? It's not your imagination when it comes to the lack of insects. It's not your imagination when it comes to how intense the sun feels or how strange these clouds look. People need to wake up out of their delusion and realize how severe our situation is. Besides uh, the, I wanna follow up on what you just said, You know, printing the flyers, getting public, and 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 doing what you can on the grassroots level is exactly what needs to be done. But what else can we do individually when it comes to things like, uh, you know, heavy snow, heavy rains, and and uh, uh, nucleatic snow, and and aluminum and barium? What can we do on an individual level to uh, not get our our bodies toxic? 
Well, certainly a clean source of water is essential and that people can find the path to, to achieving that. You don't want to exercise while the, this material is in the air and that's just common sense. You want to avoid inhaling it as much as possible or as deeply, any more deeply than you need to. But the bottom line is this, any amount of healthcare, chelation, avoiding the contamination are all only stop gap measures. We must expose and stop these programs. And people can also, our materials, for example, my presentations at geoengineeringwatch.org, which are data filled, PowerPoints, images to back up everything stated, you can feel free to burn DVDs of these presentations and have community viewings, invite people over for them to see this, for them to see the, the presentations. We have presentations from former Forest Service biologists, Fish and Game, Union of Concerned Scientists individuals. We have a lot of data there, and it's much more important to pass on hard data to, to convince those around you than to try to you know, orally convey a message that you maybe you're not as familiar with. So for all these messages or all these methods, Jimmy, if we can start spot fires of awareness and as people start to look up and connect the dots and realize this is going on, those spot fires of awareness will grow and, and will reach that critical mass much faster because we have to beat the power structure to the intersection. We have to expose this before they're ready for it to be exposed. And again, what's most important, we have to have the U.S. military, enough of them on our side in this equation or we simply don't have any chance. And, and we are getting closer because I'm hearing from military people and they know this is going on, lots of them. Are you speaking anywhere? Um, I had, I was reserved at Sonoma State at their request to speak on April 27th and uh, I got a single sentence cancellation, no explanations. Apparently uh, somebody got the word that they don't want to further the awareness of this issue. So at, at the moment, I'm focused on what I can do for my workstation here, which is actually where I can reach the most people by posting breaking data. And there's so much breaking data right now, Jimmy, I can't, I can't keep up. And on that note, this is where people should not be deterred by the resistance they feel from those around them, their family members, their friends, those that roll their eyes and walk away know that those people will be forced to wake very, very soon because of what's unfolding on the ground. We may have an ice-free Arctic this summer. We're, we're, the ice is close to breaking up. There's a number of other headlines. If it doesn't happen this summer, it'll happen by next summer. Mathematically, that's a near certainty. So there are headlines coming, and we're seeing them right now. Record rains in so many places with record drought around it. Rec I mean, people know the weather is wrong. So what I'm saying is no matter what resistance you get from family and friends, Pass on credible data and know that the seed you have planted will be forced to sprout very, very soon. Don't beat your head against the same wall if someone's being resistant. Move on to someone who's willing to wake up. All of them will be forced to wake soon. Don't give up. We need everybody in this battle. What did you think about those five earthquakes we had in a week on the Ring of Fire? Well, again, you have a number of factors here, and all of them need to be considered. The, the ionosphere heaters, when we have what I described earlier with MIT's account of the atmospheric heating above the Fukushima quake before that quake happened, that's not a unique situation. We have other uh, recordings of that type of scenario. Now, on top of that, you have thermal expansion happening all over the globe. We're seeing ocean temperatures in the Arctic, we, we saw in spring, 25 degrees above normal. And in when regards to the heat of the planet, Jimmy, it's important people understand the ocean temperatures are all that matters because a cubic meter of seawater contains 4,000 times the thermal energy of a cubic meter of air. Right. As the oceans warm, the climate will follow radically fast. And the rate at which the planet is heating right now, important for your listeners to comprehend what I'm about to say, mathematically speaking, the planet is heating right now at the thermal energy rate of four to five Hiroshima bombs per second. The thermal energy contained in four to five Hiroshima bombs every single second, 400,000 a day. That's how fast the planet's heating. So that can cause seismic activity as we have thermal expansion. One more factor, we have glacial rebound. We have Greenland popping out of the sea right now, starting to, because of the loss of the ice weight on the land mass surface. Right. Same thing's happening in Antarctica. It's severe enough in Antarctica already to affect the uh, the Earth's orbit slightly. And, and again, 
I don't want anybody to believe anything I'm saying. I'm asking you to please look up everything I'm saying. It's all verifiable. So all those factors can increase the seismic activity. It's impossible for us to know in any given circumstance which part each factor would play. Is there a number in degrees that is the point of no return? Well, again, we're in uncharted territory. And when we have past extinction events like the Petum event I mentioned, the onset of that event happened over a much, much greater time period. So the particular scenario we face right now on the planet has not happened before. Mathematically speaking, if we, again, if we stay on this trajectory, all indications are we will end up with Venus syndrome. But if we stop, we have a chance. And, and this is the bottom line. So uh, I, I think it's imperative for people to respond to the fact that none of us have a guarantee. Life has never had a guarantee at any point in time. We have no guarantee now. But should that stop us from doing what we know we should do? When we look at our children, when we, we know we owe our lives to our children, there is, is no absolutes in any equation and no guarantee with this one. But we have an obligation to try. It's not an option. It's an obligation. And if we can stop the single greatest leap we could take in the right direction, Jimmy, to expose and stop climate engineering, that's the greatest leap we could take. And if we could do that, it would drag so much else to the surface with us. We have to focus on priorities, and that is the logical mathematical priority. Thank you, Dane. Amazing conversation. One of the best shows I've done in a long time. Thank you so much, sir. And again, do not stop rolling that rock uphill. You do so much for all of us. Thank you so much, Dane. The gratitude's mine, Jimmy. Thank you for giving this issue a voice. All the best. Dane Wigington, everybody. Now, his website is geoengineeringwatch.org. That is your homework tonight after the show. Go spend some time there. You can contact Dane directly. Anything that you need to do, any resource materials, DVDs, videos, printed materials, data, reports, uh, breaking news, everything is over at geoengineeringwatch.org. The links are simple. Just go to jimmychurchradio.com, click on it, and head over there and do your part. Thank you, Dane. When I come back, a little bit of news and maybe a couple of your phone calls. Thank you so much, Dane Wigington. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Follow me on Twitter at jchurchradio. Email is jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. I'll be right back. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRARadio.com. ¿Qué tal, mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carzonel, tiburón. Y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. Not being able to fall asleep is so frustrating. The tossing, the turning, the adjustment of pillows and blankets. Ugh. Eventually, you just decide to get up and start your day really early. It doesn't have to be this way, though. Power Sleep is an all-natural, non-prescription formula that will help you sleep like a baby. It contains neurotransmitter nutrients that promote the production of serotonin, which is responsible for feelings of well-being. Power Sleep is easy to digest and absorb and is made in a base of active probiotics. Don't miss another night of sleep. Order your Power Sleep at energywave.com or call 800-TURTLE-5. Add Power Vites to your cart while you're browsing. Perfect for Monday mornings. They're a complete multivitamin and mineral formula that will give you the energy Energy you need to get through your day. Nourish your immune system and feel great. Get all the info and place your order at energywave.com. Enter code word SLEEP to get free shipping. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Did you ever turn to your radio for your favorite talk show to find that it's been preempted for this? In the air to deep right center, back goes Lewis to the wall, and it's all here! 
or this. And I'm ashamed of you, Hillary, for voting for it. Do you have a favorite talk radio program that's not available in your city? Just go to TalkStreamLive.com for links to the best streaming talk radio shows. At TalkStream Live, you will find live talk shows 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All your favorites are here. With such a large selection, you will also discover some new favorites. On the go and still want to listen? With the mobile smartphone, simply type TalkStream Live on your internet browser. Now you can take internet radio with you. You will also find hundreds of music, news, and sports streams. Best of all, the TalkStream Live directory is free and there's never a login required. Remember TalkStreamLive.com, the fastest route between you and your favorite talk radio show. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back, Fade to Black. I got to tell you, I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I was sitting here taking notes like uh, like a kid in school. That's exactly what that was. And I hope you did the same. Absolutely amazing conversation. And uh, Dane, this is the thing, is when you talk to somebody or you listen to somebody like Dane, who does the research, who, who is out there, who is collecting, the, who, is, who is really working, and, and then you hear him speak about it, you know that this is coming from uh, the correct mind and mindset, that he has worked at this, and he knows the data, and he knows what's going on collectively. I, I, I think he made one point over and over again tonight that I think is so important it's not one issue here. And the word chemtrails is wrong. I mean, it, it, it is what has been given to the issue from others, but it, it's, it's too broad and it's also an incorrect term. We have this coming from so many different directions. One, we have the military implications of it. Two, we have uh, uh, manipulating the weather directly. Three, uh, we have not only uh, the weather and rain, but we're trying to control temperatures. We have the military industrial complex. We have the private uh, corporations that are involved with this and and the money grab that is involved. So the, it, it, it is a multiple pronged issue. It's not just one, you know, and we can't just, you know, talk about one thing like this is the issue. The issue is just this. It's not. It's it's crazy when we we when we talk about uh, the drought here in California and what is causing that and is that intentional? Well, then immediately that flies off of that. So many different reasons why they would be doing that and why they would cause it to rain here now. The Central Valley in California, what what the rest of the country does not realize. When you go to your supermarket in December and January in Chicago, in Kalamazoo, in Buffalo, in New York City, and you get your fresh strawberries, <laughs> where do you think those are coming from? Your onions, your tomatoes in the dead of winter. Where do you think that's coming? That's coming from the Central Valley here in California. Trust me on this. And you start to screw with that. You're not going to have those strawberries and, and, and tomatoes and onions and lettuce and everything else that you enjoy all year long. That comes out of Central California. And we just had a drought here where the, the farmers didn't have water 
for their fields. Everything ran dry. It did. It ran dry. So you need to think. So why would they do that? It doesn't. It doesn't make sense, does it? Interrupting the food chain, making what products that are left available horribly expensive, and making more money, producing less produce, less work, less this, less that. But they're making just as much or more money because everything is more expensive. It, it, it's a bizarre catch twenty two, and that's just that. That has nothing to do with the military. Or weaponized weather control. Certainly, if you can control the weather over over Russia, you can win. So there's that aspect. It's it's a bizarre, bizarre situation. And Dane really knows what he's talking about. And to that end, listen to this. Biotech giant. Monsanto is now reporting multiple profit plummets in 2015 relating to sales for both its genetically modified crop creations and its best-selling herbicide, Roundup. Now, here we go. Once again, Monsanto has reported declining profits for the fiscal second quarter earnings by 25%. So before people think that shows like this and us and you, my family, we are making a difference. I can assure you CNN and Fox have nothing to do with this. It's us speaking out and doing something about it. For Monsanto's second quarter, Total sales for Monsanto dropped 13%. With one of Monsanto's top sellers, corn seeds, GMO, falling 11%. Why? Because it's people like us that are causing an unfavorable agricultural market. We don't want that crap. And we know that there's something wrong with altering nature and we are speaking out and the best way to do it is in the pocketbook 13 percent 25 percent overall 25 percent profit loss and i want to thank all of you for that monsanto man that is just like the foulest (laughs) foulest of all words on planet earth and i'm going to thank all of you for pulling that one off all right this fade to black thank you tane wigington geoengineeringwatch.org go and spend some time there tonight have a good time fade to black's executive producers rita kamarian shows produced by hilton j paul mark d kovar lj3 renee mark dunbar jonas thank you dennis thank you bob announcers are steve harder gene vito and mark d kovar Fady by Dale. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Spaceboy. Spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. Syndication is KGRA The Planet. Thank you to everyone that called in tonight. Thank you, Dane Wingington. This broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2016 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. Email is Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. I want everybody to be safe. Go back, Lee Teppy.